let's just start off by saying, you know, this is the last episode of Leftovers. Yeah, after our last episode yeah. in the heated uh, debate that we had, I realized that I was a class trader. And that <laughs> I don't know why people said that, because, like, that's a good thing in your situation to be a class. Like, didn't, didn't Ethan say that there was, like, or didn't you tell me that Ethan was like, I don't want to debate shit anymore because you're all psychopaths? No. Hassan like, is the one who doesn't do debates. Ethan has no, been no, destroying no, you, you people said in Ethan, debates. You said Ethan didn't want to do it anymore because of the reaction from fucking Hassan's orbiters. Oh, yeah, he did say something like that. Yeah. He's like, I, I remember you saying something. Like, being like, being like, you guys are the reason why I'm not a socialist anymore, mm. basically, is what he said. Yeah, that did That's happen. Very funny. Like, I don't think they meant it like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. I like what you're saying, though. Like, you'd be like Engels, you know what I mean? Like, the guy who who co-authored it and, and was, like, facilitating it, but also, like, had a factory. You know what I mean? So that's right. not a bad thing. Angles was a class trader. That's right. That's me. I'm Angles. There was crazy fallout from our last episode, which is kind of nuts because, you know, I will, to, ignoring all that, though, it seemed like a lot of people did like the conversation. I myself am pretty ignorant on the methods of governing and uh, histories and all that. So I do think this conversation of I'm not even going to say capitalism because that seems to trigger people. I'm just going to say social mm. democracy. Because when okay. people hear me say capitalism, they shit their fucking britches. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of... Well, first of all, we're online. So no matter what you say, people are going to be very passionate about it. That's true. One of the things that I do quite frequently is yell at people to be normal. Your because chat, just have no because they keep correcting you, no, no, dickhead. Hassan is that the problem? most terribly <laughs> online. Needs to touch grass, like, like uh, his this, is, this, is the, this is this is one of the this is one of the funniest like things I've ever seen him say. Absurd. Uh, I think Ethan being like, "That's right, I'm Angles," mm. is uh, pretty good too. That is pretty funny. And the other side of it is like, there's a lot of uh, you know baby socialists out there who are like on their own journey okay and they get like really passionate and and the the goal always is like oh my god we have to convert every single person to socialism immediately yeah or anyone to the right realize. of me is part of the problem there, there's that too but of course you know um it's uh it takes a while it takes a while to to engage in uh any kind of movement building and it's, it's something hard, i stress quite a bit it's hard to tell how much of it was what movement is he building can it be a fuckwit i don't know um anyway regardless i i i was actually invigorated by the conversation and that you know i just want to get I, enough I of an intro so that about. when we and skip so forward because we're not doing a, a lot and yeah, i've yeah. been educating myself a lot and I want to continue the conversation today, but I don't want to have a debate. I want to have like a, I want to go on a, a fact finding journey for myself uh -huh. about <laughs> how socialism is addressing certain issues versus social democracy. Okay. And to understand from you, a socialist, mm -hmm. um, That's what, rich. what really that is and how, how, how would it be? Like you know, an accusation. Dan, are you a socialist? Would you say? Uh, I'd broadly so. I'd say so. Sure. It explains why Dude, we're about to get types. executed after this. Ethan's called. <laughs> Dude, everybody was riding for you guys. This is Ethan's uh, McCarthy uh, trials. <laughs> Oh, being a socialist is cool, apparently, online. No, dude. It's, it, it it's is like sick. there no, are. He's right. For what? as super cool, it is. For as no, many, it's for cool. as many like dope. very low. Cool. Well, of course, there's a lot of there's a lot of people, people here. <laughs> there's a lot of people here that would be, uh, like, there are very few places online where you can just be like out and about and openly uh, defend uh, any kind of economic organization, society beyond capitalism, uh, without a tremendous amount of scrutiny. What? Um, well, I got we roasted. Do exist under a in our capitalist community. dogma. Well, of course, the other the other side was defending you. 
what the fuck did he just say? I don't know. Really? Oh my god. He is legitimately brain dead. He has he has not got a functioning brain. It's vacant. It's hollow. I mean, I'm pretty socialist and I don't encounter shit about my stuff, mainly because I block people who identify themselves as socialists on site. <laughs> and my my feed is pretty clear because of that. It always helps. I'm good with I'm good with I'm good with the with those types of people gatekeeping as hard as they do. Yeah. Keep doing it. It's hilarious. Segregate themselves. Yeah. Keep doing it. Tim Pool defending me or whatever, whoever. I didn't watch all. I didn't watch all the. No, I I don't think Tim Pool did. Absolutely. But one of his one of his uh, one of his uh, commanders, the guy who's like always the the really weird like failed musician guy. That I think describes all of them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) True. But um. I want to better represent my position uh, because I didn't. I don't really know a lot, and I feel like I've done a lot of research in the week. Uh, following the conversation. So, begin. what did you do? What did you read? What kind of research? Did you I do? had a very in-depth conversation with Chat GBT. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Okay, that's good. I got. I got. I asked it really kind of. Well, Ben Shapiro thinks it's socialist, like Chat GPT socialist. So, right. like Chat GPT probably. Chat GPT. Lenin, is right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That GPT keeps it so real. You it, don't even yeah, know. That GPT Lenin pilled you. So, <laughs> no. Is Lenin a socialist or a social de- democrat? No, neither. Lenin is is uh, the the revolutionary figure that is probably more important than than Marx even. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just how can you say that unironically is what I want to know and you got a lot of them I love dogs you love dogs he more, more important to who? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Right? No, Lenin is not more important, nor is he more influential. Marx is far more influential. It's so stupid. Far more important. Lenin so wouldn't stupid. exist without Marx. You and also, and also if you're picking us socialist revolutionary, the obvious choice is Robespierre. <laughs> and let's be honest like he did some horrific shit but he's a lot cooler than lenin mm. i don't think uh robespierre was as much of an elitist cunt as lenin either uh he was a lawyer uh, so okay he was an elite no, no 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 he tries to, he's like the uh embodiment of like the super atheist right uh, so yeah. they Basically, that's his whole theory is like why the terror needed to exist to replace people's fear of God, thinking that like people stayed in line with morality because they feared hell. Right. So that was that was his first theory that gives us the modern idea of state terror. Which Lenin and Stalin perfected. Yes. And the Taliban and Iran, um, which mirror those revolutions, which is weird that nobody talks about them. Mm especially the afghan revolution the communist one as well both revolutions are very interesting um anyway he gets rid of all religion so there's a pentecost is like a really important holiday and he hosts the cult of the supreme being and like has himself like crowned as god and stuff he has a bigger ego than napoleon at the end of the day so and that's why and that's why they kill him Big also, ego and a big hat. You know, do you know like uh, the events leading up to his death? Sorry, I interrupted you. I'm just really excited to talk about this guy because I love his love. His Gone. So, do you know what happened leading up to his death? Uh, no. So basically, he got so fascist that his own people decided that they needed to arrest him and guillotine him. Right. Nice. So when they came for him, the guy who was like with him jumped out the window, got impaled on like bayonets down below, and like bayonets. spikes. Bayonets. Yeah, because it was like he jumped out the window and they were like, you know, they had, oh, they like, had their rifles up. Yeah, they had like pikes or something. He he mm. gets in, he jumps out a window and gets impaled on something. That's all I remember. Pretty then awesome. Robespierre 
goes to shoot himself. Mm. And they grab him right before he can, and he ends up just shooting himself through the mouth and blows oh his God. lower jaw off. So they tie his jaw together. You know, you've seen the head wraps, you know, they go from like bottom yeah. up. So they tie his jaws together. So he's just like in intense pain. He, his jaw is barely attached. And when they go to execute him, they take it off and he lets out a ghastly howl. And that's the mm. last thing that you hear from him because the pain of his jaw falling apart when they take off the bandage. Good. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame Lennon didn't die as horrifically. <laughs> I mean, he brought it on himself, you know? Mm. He tried to shoot himself and fucked up, which is so funny. Yeah. I mean, just going back... Fucking Jesus Christ. Like, it's such... And, like, this is the two two things that I really studied. It was the Russian and the Chinese revolutions. Oh, you're gonna love this. Later on... And to, the only and part... to, to say well, anything about... eventually that jump ahead to the revolution stuff. Oh, but like just to to say anything about Lenin that isn't he was an elitist scumbag who perverted the idea of Marx to benefit himself is historically inaccurate. He was a psycho. He was he was like Mao in the in the sense that nobody could disagree with him. I believe there was only one person who lived who ever disagreed with Lenin and told it to his face, and she was an anarchist. <laughs> so it's like, you know, th this guy was not a good person. <laughs> Quote me. Uh, well, Lenin you know, cool. you know me. I'm a, I'm a, I got a soft spot for a very. Uh, I'm gonna move this to the top because I end up. Like, it's crazy how often we end up using this. <laughs> The reason why Gorbachev was dep disposed, deposed, Opposed. is because he did what needed to be done, and because mm -hmm. of Chernobyl. So yeah, it was all. It was realistically, it was all Chernobyl. The the. Oh no 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 no! His policy destroyed Russia's economy, uh, like Glasnost yeah. and Perestroika. Mm. Uh, those policies were the reason the Soviet Union ended more than anything else. Those two oh, policies. yeah, but like... But the, also, the like, one of those policies was is... granting the freedom of speech to the people. He literally... They literally have less rights than they did in the Soviet Union under Gorbachev right now. How crazy is that? Pretty insane. The Soviet Union under Gorbachev, if, if it stayed together and it didn't fall the way it did, mm. we might not see as much catastrophic fallout now. Because Gorbachev I mean, would have easily just been like, oh, Ukraine, you want to leave? Like, no problem, you know? Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, is that because of the economic collapse and because of how quickly it fell apart, it was more disastrous. If, especially, especially if we were able to move forward in a way that was done through autonomous states, slowly getting granted, like, statehood. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what the Budapest that, Memorandum was. It was, I know. It was Russia and America dealing with, I think, four? Yeah. The, states that the had thing nukes. Is, the thing is, is that it's because it fell apart, right? Mm. The way that it did. And people who think that the United States wanted the... So it's it's like, obviously, I wouldn't want Ukraine to still be under the Soviet Union. But I can still acknowledge that the fall of the USSR, the way it did, was actually very bad. And it, and it caused uh, a lot of damage. Yeah. So... If like the if I think that we would be in a better position today if Gorbachev didn't fall from power and put a fucking alcoholic in charge after. I mean, he could have. He could have. No, see, I, I say he could have, but he probably couldn't have. E even if if he dissolved the Soviet Union, gave them all statehood, and was like, "Hey, we'll maintain the Warsaw Pact, but the Soviet Union is no more." He didn't want the Warsaw Pact, though. I that's know. The point. I know. But and th that's another thing is, is that there was a little bit of a neocon attitude from Reagan as well. Like, mm. Reagan was basically told him to go fuck himself, bow down to us whenever they did, like, <laughs> negotiations. The fall of Yugoslavia as well. Mm. Genocides happened because of that. Yeah. But also, genocides happened under the Soviet Union. So... Well, tankies would say they didn't. Whatever. But that's that's because tankies uh, like Nazis and they love denying genocides. He's just a socialist? Yes, he's right. the first... Like, I mean, this uh, is more, <laughs> the, the, the father of the USSR. That was a nice, that was a nice legacy to have. Could have been.
I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't, no, I no, 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 there's nothing. I don't think it's that controversial to say that, like, yeah, I mean, USSR, or well, Joseph Stalin was basically right. whatever. That's not what I want to get into he right was, now. Stalin definitely had a lot of issues, I will admit. First, Bro, you I think? Would say How do you that just feel like I promote my shit all the time? Stalin definitely had a lot of issues. That's such like a softball. It's like all the tankies that have pictures of Stalin everywhere. What the fuck are you actually doing? Like, this guy is a mass murdering psychopath. The only one we do apologia for is Che. Okay, guys, come on. <laughs> You're taking it too far. Oh, well, no, shit. because I put, yeah. I, you got some notes. That's fair. That's what fair. email is this? I say let the conversation begin. Point where uh, they, they converge and, and uh, capitalism erodes into so, some. This is Leninism. Formation. Let me be, I guess, more specific. <laughs> like capitalism I, eating itself. Like this is Lenin. We don't I need think... to rewind. We know it's Leninism. We want to hopefully uh, get beyond even... Leninism. We don't need to deep. I don't think Leninism. it is. I don't think that is. I. It was um. Uh, Marx that did the whole eat itself thing, wasn't it? In Go a ahead. socialist state, uh, you should still very much give the people. Uh, the the false notion of choice and make it feel like they have a say in the process while so, doing the bidding of, I mean it's a pretty cynical worldview, but I think that you know that's what states are supposed to do. Let me ask you this, and that and, will create a structure where there are significantly less uh, people who are like, I hate the system right now. I don't feel happy. I don't feel good in the system that I exist under. Mm -hmm. So I should, uh, you know do counter-revolutionary capitalist reforms. Well, and like... So basically what Hassan is saying is he's a statist and wants a state. Cool. Counter-revolutionary well, capitalist reform. Yeah, that's that's a cringe fucking term. Just you know, don't, don't ever put those Bacholo, words in. The, the true counter-revolutionary, Sir Gorbachev. I think there's that many people in Sweden or Norway who are saying, no, we need to move to a pure socialist because everybody there is provided. I don't think there's a large, I, I'm speaking at a No, you're, here. you're absolutely right. You're actually 100% correct. <laughs> so, so like some Orthodox Marxists actually hate the welfare state for this reason, because the welfare <laughs> state is a continuation of capitalism by offering social, uh, offering certain amenities. Seems like the, in that the, case, the liberal capitalism is thrived okay. and, uh, and, and has created a structure where like the, inherent contradictions that exist under capitalism that i think everyone would agree with including yourself uh those inherent contradictions become uh, a little bit more muddied and they never end up getting to a point where uh they they converge and and uh capitalism erodes into it's called compromise you fucking idiot that's but he's already saying that he already said that's what states should not listen to the people. They should give him the illusion of freedom. He already just said that. Yeah. yeah. So he's a fascist. Yes, we know <laughs> this. <laughs> so, Some socialist formation. Let me be, I guess, more specific. If you're in a socialist country, is there one party or multiple parties? Um, it depends. No, it I mean, because one, one party's party. scared. Right? It doesn't depend. There are no multi-state socialist states because socialism, as you say, and as is known by most people who actually know what the fuck they're talking about, socialism is a transitionary period between capitalism and communism. If there are multiple parties, there is no communism coming. Here's it's a single thing. party authoritarian. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the thing is, is that they there is kind of like a multi-party thing in china like i mean there's a rival party okay. in, no 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 no. i'm dead the guy who like <laughs> they, no listen listen just let me talk you'll you'll see what i'm saying you just have to let me I know i know what you're gonna say you know the guy that like she deposed right <laughs> mm. it's like a political rival faction inside the ccp you understand yeah, what i'm saying factions, so i'm saying yeah. there is there is technically a way that you can have a one-party state if it's like a caucus type thing sure you know what i'm saying that's all I'm saying. This is like that's kind of the illusion that even China wants to push, mm. is that there's like kind of like almost like a multi, you know, factional thing. Well, they like, like to claim people. that they're democratic, but they're not. Yeah, I'm like, well, the only people who don't claim to be democratic are like Gulf monarchies and mm. Afghanistan. So yeah, that's not really important. 
The no, point is, like, is that you can do a one-party state, not necessarily a communist Chinese one-party state, but like I consider most, like I think honestly, like Canada at this point is a one-party state. Mm. Australia is too, really. And anything, I think those types of parliamentary systems are closer to a one-party state than mm -hmm. what America has. Yeah. So. And like we have minor parties, but they're irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They're completely irrelevant because at the end of the day, they're not going to win and they have to give their votes to one of the two main parties. And then what's the fucking point? Why am I voting? Why am I even bothering? The idea of a one party state isn't like scary to me. No. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing. But like, <coughs> that would be an argument that someone would bring up is like, oh, China has factions. Not really. Not anymore, anyway. Because they were like the Beijing group and then Shanghai and a couple other ones. But that was that was about it. The And they're gone. They're, there's no more. It's just G. It's just him. I think Putin's he is a little China. jealous. Huh? I think Putin's a little jealous. Oligarchs in Russia are losing power. Because mm. China doesn't answer to their companies. Yeah. And now, and now Russia's fucked because now China's got a stranglehold on their economy as well. Apparently, apparently, all the phones in Russia now are basically Chinese. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, keep going. Like, keep going. Let's see what else happens here. Yeah. Already right. forty. Can we agree on that. A one-party system would, is not a good system. I think you and I would agree that we. No, no, no. I'm just asking you. I don't care about the United States. I'm asking but, you about the, socialism. I, I, I think that there are different forms of governance, and the United States is not that different. I don't from... care about the United States. I, wanna, I just want to talk about a that. I think country. that no matter what happens, the state does what the state is supposed to do. You can either do it at the behest of your citizens because you genuinely, earnestly believe that, like, that is the best possible way of developing a society, or you do it at the behest of capital owners and, and capitalism. So you're saying you don't think it matters if there's one party or... I don't think it party. matters as far as um, I care about direct, demo de direct democratic participation because in local... Uh, in, in local one position. party systems with... Socialism or communism has pretty much always been a catastrophe. Yeah, a human humanitarian disaster. No, no, I agree with that. There's just so much risk in having one party. I I agree with that. I think that a multi-party system is obviously going to be better. My point is that it doesn't even matter if you have a parliament. It doesn't even matter if you have a multi-party system. <laughs> the changes that are being made in one direction or the other are oftentimes incredibly marginal. Um, and and plus. Uh, and the differences are not born out of like uh so, you know the party disagreements the differences are born out of like genuine material conflict like even inc including like the civil war it's never like the kindness of people's uh or, or like one party of individuals being like we are kind we want to do good things and the other side is bad and they want to do bad things like, so what i want to say was this then but if you're in a socialist country with multiple parties and one of the parties is a capitalist i don't know whether this is a thing but i just thought of this I've been thinking about it. In fascist states, opposition is usually socialist. In socialist states, opposition is usually democratic. I, d I don't know if that is a that would be a rule, but that I don't really just... I don't really care about systems at the end of the day. No, I know, but just like off the top of my head, it's just very interesting that fascists are opposed by socialists and socialists are opposed by dem uh, democracy. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe it's nothing. List party, mm -hmm. which would surely exist. Yeah. What would you do if that party started gaining momentum? And it was clearly like people wanted that route. They wanted that route. Yeah. So what do you do? I think um, I would do what America has done. Not to the same Which degree. Is what? Not to the same yeah. degree as like, uh, you know, McCarthy's trials or anything like that. Um, but um, I would offer additional amenities to ensure that people are comfortable and happy. Because I feel like any but kind of... what do you of... do if they're like, nah, fuck that. We're doing capitalism. Well, if everything is if everything is given to you yeah. at that point, if every single thing is given to you, if all of your problems are solved, which I think we can both agree uh, is is not under capitalism and has not happened. No. Um, if all of those problems have been solved, then can I just point out that these two are very, very, very wealthy under a capitalist system? Talking about socialism, yeah, it's that's very ironic. I know it gets into that, and it's that's Ethan <laughs> kind of pulls on him. Ethan's cooking now, him There right is now. no need for con good conflict of that regard. But they're, they're saying, no, we want to ultimate... do... Because they're like, yo, this is a free country, right? Well, we want to do capitalism. Yeah. 
we think the market should regulate the prices and shit. Like, there, and we don't always... think the workplace should be um, so <laughs> like okay, Vietnam. That's a great. That's a great question. And what if uh, you because, have to ask why though? Damn, at that point. they're cooking because, them. Well, like, people never can be explained <laughs> by why anyway. You know what I mean? Some people are gonna be dumb. You're right. It's like yeah, you know, like you. It's just gonna exist. You know it is. Yeah. And so just if the it. and so if the will of the people is to go back and to do more of a social de democracy, is that something that a socialist country should move towards, or should there be resistance in the government to keep socialism? I think the resistance should be akin to how capitalist <laughs> governments have resisted historically any kind of socialist movement, not to that same degree of violence, but I think that, yes, um, the the solution to that would always be education and offering not to, more... Not to the same um, degree of violence. <laughs> Bro. Deng Xiaoping was a capitalist reformer. And even when people asked for more than he was giving them, look what happened. Yeah. If you ask tankies, it's just a bunch of bikes that got run over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there aren't pictures of dead bodies all over. Oh, no, no. Those are all bikes. Square, no. Those are all bikes. Mm -hmm. All bikes. All of them. Haven't you they're seen all, them? They're all bikes. It's, 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 it, there's no blood pools under those bikes. I don't know. It's just, they're just bikes. Very, very, very fat bikes. Education? Re education, certainly. Yeah. Did he just advocate for the Uyghur genocide? Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Keep going. I know that that's like... Re-education is such a fucking retarded fucking word. Any, It's like it's like bourgeois, bourgeois, however the fuck you say that stupid fucking word. It's it's exactly like that. I Anybody who says actively that? engaging civilians. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who uses re-education is a psycho and probably a fascist. Let's be Civilians real. were killed, uh, and that's what we're going to continue to try to do. Like a that's trigger what word. Camps. No, no, not like that. Um, I know there's a trigger word because everyone goes, oh, re-education, what do you mean? Like, immediately people think like, are, well, you, talking about, that. are you talking about like resident schools? Are you talking about uh, the Xinjiang? Yeah, 100%, they yeah. do. They do it, they did it in Xinjiang, which, which I think good, was, right? No, I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah I don't think it was good. And this is uh, something I have openly criticized as well. Like, the, is that the sun? My brother, the massive this surveillance is Haram. apparatus that they built in Xinjiang is not good. So, what would be Even good about the... a socialist re education camp for capitalists? It so, we can start killing the Protestants. No, my God, that's not what it's about. It's about right? Like, are people committing crimes at the behest of this? Because if there's a socialist state, and someone is doing like white terror, let's say, or someone is doing Feeling South wages. Korean style, uh, you know, purges of communists, which have always, which has happened historically in every country what in happens, America is aligned yeah, with. Yeah, what happens to the, the communists, communists though? They, no purges. No, never. No purges ever. Stalin didn't purge the entire fucking party. <laughs> That never happened. Communists, famously you know, known, famously, you, Joe, bro. <laughs> here's the thing: where is the where is the capitalist terrorist groups who want revolutionary capitalism? Where are mm. they? Online. <laughs> <laughs> They're what you would call ANCAPs. <laughs> launched you know military dictatorships whether we recognize it or not those things have happened right oh so no. in a situation like that um i think if there's any kind of like terrorism happening sure yeah um, if there's then, violence that's, then yes, that's I obvious do, i do think that uh there should be an enforcement mechanism and in that enforcement mechanism i think like rehabilitation hassan is pro cop which would include re education okay. as well oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Would probably be now i understand better. now i understand when these people say things like, oh, I'm pro-rehabilitation, not punishment, what mm -hmm. they're actually talking about is fucking camps. Better than, like, uh, you know, a prison structure <laughs> where they have slavery, like, in the United States of America. I'm oh, you mean, like, gulags in the Soviet old. Union? Yeah, there definitely wasn't slave prison labor anywhere else. Fucking Yeah, idiot. but he's talking about right now in the U.S. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right now in China. <laughs> it's just like, there's prison slave labor everywhere. No, they said they ended the re-education camp. Mm -hmm. Now they just have the slave camp. Mechanism of a socialist country, whereas there, where people still have individual freedoms to like form, to assemble, and can also be like, yeah, I'm a capitalist, so what? And we're trying to grow our movement. I don't understand the organization of the socialist 
free country? Because it seems to me to have a socialist country uh, that there needs to be some amount of dampening of, you know, uh, rights. What do you well, think of the conclusions because, Ethan has come to because, because he's because... talked to enough socialists to realize yeah. it's a bad he's idea? nailed it. Nailed it. Every single thing he said is 100% accurate. Every question he's asked is, I mean, perfectly worded to truly show Hassan for who he is. A fucking idiot. And that's the thing is, it's like, we can talk about why capitalism sucks all day as well. It's easy. Yeah. It's easier, in fact. It's so because, easy. <laughs> because it's in front of you all the time. Yeah. And then all the examples for socialism, socialism are all in the past. When the government and clouded does by propaganda. stuff. And it's more socialism, the more stuff it does. And if it does a real lot of stuff, it's communism. Because, like, it's... um. The, the other problem is it's so hard to accurately criticize uh, historical communism because it's so clouded in not only their own propaganda, but America's propaganda. That's the thing is, it's like, I don't give a shit about history. Mm. What's happening now in China? Yeah, yeah. But like the historical context needs to be the, needs to be found, and that's the that's the problem. Is, is people people don't want to criticize China for what it is. Ago, five years ago, China was a fine country, mm -hmm. right? Like, it there's was. way worse countries than China. Mm -hmm. Like Saudi Arabia probably still could be considered worse than China in many regards. Possibly, yeah. My chinchilla is being a fruit cup again. <laughs> um. Like, if, like the fact that, like, if Iran took over Saudi Arabia, human rights would improve. Yeah. Like, that's saying point. something. Yeah. But, like, it's it's just so, it's so clouded in both sides' propaganda that finding actual information is so goddamn hard. And it's going to be Dude, the same. Dude, I know. Like, think. it's actually really, really hard because you can only find a lot of, like, pro-Soviet sources, you mm. know? Yeah. And it's, it's going to be the yeah. same with Ukraine in a couple years. Depending on which way it goes, of course. No, it won't. We got you. This. Don't reckon? No, no, no. It's already it's already hard to figure out like 2014 to 2022 stuff. It's so fucking clouded and muddy. Oh, and... I agree that it's tr attempted to be clouded, but I think mm. we'll have. I think there's enough clarity involved. Let's see. Let's see. My point picture. is always the same. Uh, it's that this is a constant. This is consistent. What you're describing is consistent with the american formation it's consistent with capitalism it's just a reality that will always exist mm -hmm. violence and who gets to do violence is an inherent part of politics because politics is uh at the end of the day a distribution of resources and a distribution of violence who gets to have what resources and who doesn't have the resources as a consequence of that and if they do something to get those resources <coughs> what the state will be able to do the state has a monopoly on violence across the board, no matter what happens, right? Yeah. There's a lot of places with law and states don't reach, even yeah. inside this country. I mean, fucking, aren't the Amish completely separate? Yeah, but like, like if oh, they commit, like, if they're, they'll, they, like, they can still get arrested for doing, like, murder stuff. Mm. They're not, so, like, the difference is, is that there's complicated laws with, first nation laws and stuff like that so technically right. they have to if they, they have to like work they always have the authority uh, the mm -hmm. nation officers so if it's like the fbi they have to work through like uh, it's almost like how they used to do in pakistan they had to have federal agents to go meet with the tribes hmm. in uh fata interesting that's why it's called the federally administered tribal areas yeah interesting i didn't know that about the native american thing yeah so they they completely have their own law, hmm. technically. Cool. Good for them. <laughs> I guess. Well, it's actually an issue. Um, there's a really good movie on it. I forgot what it's called, but there's a femicide issue, ah. especially in like places like Wyoming and stuff. There's like a, a domestic violence thing? Yeah, serious. Like people dump mm, women's bodies. People specifically target those women. So people come out and into the reservation to target and rape and kill these women. Yeah, the it, it's a serious issue. Serious issue. And I forgot, it's like it's like Moon River or something, the movie mm -hmm. I'm thinking of. And uh, it's you know how Quentin Tarantino does guns? Like at the end of Django, the guy gets pulled on a yeah. rope. All the, the guy has like a Marlin rifle. So whenever he shoots people, they go flying through walls oh, and stuff. Awesome. Like it's so ridiculous. 
but it's like a serious movie journey. about like rape you know mm, crazy i think jeremy renner's in it no shit yeah interesting like, i'm not an anarchist a lot of anarchists uh, will no get mad shit. at me for saying this but the state should have some level of, yeah, of uh, a yeah, violent mechanism because well, no matter what happens, and, stuff, and yeah. there's different forms of violence as yeah. well, the structural violence of poverty or direct violence in the, in, uh, in the form of, of uh, military uh, boots on the ground, military warfare, imperialism, police violence, police brutality. Uh, these are all different forms okay. of violence. There will be some exertional force required yes. to maintain a socialist country. Yes, uh, not just a social country, any country. Sure, any country. Yes. That's why the Zapatistas are better. Yes. They don't need that. Mm -hmm. They have a force to defend themselves. But it's like, it's not like the, like, look well, at Syria. With the Kurds Syria, as well. Syria re well, they really need police forces and patrols and stuff like that mm. because there's so much insurrection. They have, it like, they have Turk and Iranian imperialist forces throughout them. Yeah. You know? So they do, yeah. they, and ISIS. So they need the resources well, to if, have if anything they probably need an intelligence service that too but i'm not saying it's like it, the the propaganda sells it like there's a lot of freedoms there there's not they can't afford it mm. until we uh reach a point of of i guess uh until we reach a point of production uh and our productive output has gotten to a point where it's so streamlined and and so organized that um, there is no need for a state. But I don't know if we'll, we will ever be able to get there, uh, where the state withers away and we have a classless, borderless, moneyless society. Right. You probably, yeah. I mean, if it is, it's like not a, in a like long a techno time. Techno communist. It'd have to be like post World War Three or something. Uh, it, it's a techno futurist. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a techno futurist idealism, utopian ideology. He just advocated for, for, for sadism. Nuke everything and start again. I just consider that accelerationism. Okay, I was right. close. The movie is Wind River. Ah. Uh -huh. Not Moon River. Yeah, yeah. So, Poseidus advocate for a society akin to those proposed by General Marxist theory, a proletarian revolution, will destroy the bourgeois state and replace in turn by a socialist state. This yeah. is just communist con. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But that's basically what he said is like, and that's basically what they thought is that um world war three yep. would come from nuclear weapons and you would start again from a it's proletarian not, revolution love shit. yeah that, that's the level shit. and i didn't even know i didn't even think ethan realized the conclusion he came to but like i was talking about he was saying technocracy and that's like i agree like it, mm. like the eventual merging with technology like the eventual merging with ai and technology is going yeah. to bring about a new system it just oh, is sure. inevitable. Yeah. And is that gonna system going to be fucking stuck. communism, though? No. Gonna get is it gonna, like, binary. you think that, you think they're going to fucking go to an 18th century ideology? Wouldn't no, it be, they should be ditch 19th? all of them. If it's 1800s, it's 19th, 19th century, right? 19th, yeah. In 19th century <laughs> philosophy, you think they're going to go to that when we merge with AI? What do you think? There's no way. But they would also have to ditch capitalism at the same time. That's the that's the thing, Bro, right? They're going to know like how to like use like tachyons to like grab resources mm. from the past or some shit. You know, <laughs> like the the advancement in technology we're talking about post scarcity is like beyond cognition. Mm. Just I like mean, how, like, a a land, like, the world should be communist. Like, Star Trek, I think, is the best way at looking at future politics in space. You could say mm -hmm. that it's a communist society. Um, the expanse is very interesting when it comes to that as well. The only thing is, is that I don't give a shit. I like ANCAP futures where everything's shit and corporations rule stuff. Those <laughs> are the good stories. Them, them's going to be the futures. Yeah, just wait. When we'll Amazon, have we'll have ads in the sky. Soon. Just wait. Yeah. I guess another angle here. So, um, ex worker exploitation seems to be at the heart of socialism and communism. Yes. And so, I want to ask you this question: If an As employee is fairly workers. compensated, and by fairly, I mean that factors like work, um, uh, compensation. You know, they're being paid well beyond the means of living. They can afford uh, comfortable housing, food, mm -hmm. pleasure, vacation, savings, all the things people would want to do with money. If they're provided in all those ways that are, we see as important, is that still exploitation? 
Um, in the Marxian sense, yes. In the capitalist sense, no. Capitalism is seen, so, well. Social. So, Mark, when you say Marxism, you're talking yeah. about socialism. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, in the in the Marxist perspective, under you know uh, Marxian economics, Marxist theory, uh, exploitation mm -hmm. is. Did you say that? His dog. <laughs> it's his son's dog. Is not a good or bad thing. Uh, it is just a thing that happened. <laughs> okay. Um, and it goes back to something I've described many, many times over, which is that the there there are two classes. Um, there is the labor class, the wage laborers, uh -huh, the, the haves and haves not, and the the bourgeois class, the capital owning class, right? Mm -hmm. And these two classes have two uh, inherently contradictory interests. You work jobs. I'm in Spain without the ass. Skip, I don't Your care. Boss, on the other I don't hand, care. Wants Here's the thing. He said bourgeois. I really hours. lost interest. Let's jump yeah. 10 minutes here. Let's go to like 45 or something. Yeah, that's good. I'm sure there's market considerations on the one hand, like what the normal wage would look like. But that is I don't like give a the, shit about wages. Minimum. Keep going. You We're know? still on wages. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> By that, because it's go, so on, yeah, go to an hour. Let's <laughs> go to a flat hour. They're, Dan is in oh, on it now. We definitely this, don't this care. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. And uh, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is funny though. Like, life. One thing I will mention in the domestic, you know, going back to the labor force thing is that like. We're so susceptible <clears throat> and, and so programmed under capitalist dogma that we refuse to see a world outside of it. And we're so captured in what that, uh, that worldview. That, well, stop. Full uh, stop. This is so stupid. This is like saying that, like, I just, it's so dumb. I just ripped my headphones out. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is like when you say people who lived under monarchy could not conceive something beyond monarchy. Do you think those people weren't like, wow, it really sucks living into the king? You know? Well, that's, you don't because, think, that's because he was a Leninist. Do anyone ever stop that said, wow, our society sucks? You don't think you don't think the nine to five worker thinks to themselves, wow, I wish I didn't have to work this job for as many hours just to make ends meet? Do you think that doesn't happen? Like, how do you, like, you of course know this and you can't even see the contradictions within your own head to these things. That's because he's a uh, tanky and has no functioning brain. Yeah, the connections, the connections don't link. The you know, you know the, in The Simpsons when Homer's brain is just a monkey clapping symbols? Well, That's I, the song. I, you know what? I just learned something. So, like, uh, <laughs> I, I learned the difference and, like, like why Nikola Tesla was important. Like, I mm. kind of, like, knew this. I just didn't know the exact, like, mechanics of it. But, like, Tassan's brain is DC. Normal brains mm. are AC current. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. DC. Yes. <laughs> He still revolves around a socialist mode of production where the owners, uh, the workers are the owners. They own the means of production. They have the, they, they. He's such an idiot. If the workers own the means of production, how is their capital? Where's the capital go? Are they going to just like generate capital from their, their one twentieth share? No, you can't have that. It's not, it doesn't work. Where you can have socialist aspects inside a capitalist system. It just doesn't work the other way. What do you mean? No, I mean, no. I think you can't have capitalism inside socialism. Economics should not be government systems. They should be business no. systems. Yes, 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 yes. And as soon as you get away from them being business systems, then you it just gets silly. Yeah. It gets silly. And that's why confederalism is better because then every mm -hmm. individual place can decide how they want to run their thing and still trade and it's cooperate also, with everybody else it's also still socialist yes it's really just multi-party socialism oh uh, yeah pretty much they have a say in their benefits they have a say in and what i can fire them the whenever company. i want though well you there will still obviously be protections against like unjust firings and whatnot and there should be certainly there are um, now and there are now as well except really good uh, america is a great example of in california there are really america good. is a great example however of like how there aren't which how it right shouldn't be state. and it shouldn't be that way exactly yeah. and but the reason why it's not that way is because we have capitalism with like laughable socialist characters Dude, that's we don't even i have find it very interesting that you're saying you want socialism with capital Capitalist characteristics. Capitalist characteristics in the sense that not the it doesn't touch the means of production or the or the mode of production, but ne but offers uh, an 
offers an abundance of resources and offers the the idea that you have freedom. One of the major problems with the former idea. historic socialist projects have always been commodity production being streamlined on necessity and not necessarily silly things like lighter production, industries that revolve around making, uh, I don't know, chocolate and, and coffee. Coffee was a major problem in, in, in uh, East Germany. So like things of that nature that people need, um, I think those are things that we need to work on. Uh, and, and that capitalism, I think, has done a much better job at, at offering uh, to <laughs> people. And that has a very sedating God damn it. Uh, influence on the masses. He has I, don't a contradiction. I don't see what's so great and humanizing about hiring a janitor for 0.000015% of the company. <laughs> what do you, I, I don't understand. What, that's not what I said. But, but, you so, you, just, but you the, just made that assertion. But, you, but we're saying there's a minimum wage. There's a minimum equity mm -hmm. share that that janitor would need to get. Well, are you talking about we're in ta comparison to the yeah, talking about a socialist model? minimum wage? Uh, right. Uh, well, it, uh, but comparing it to a, a up, model man. where employees are okay. <laughs> and they distribute. Oh my god! I so can cool. do. I can. You know what I mean? Like, like, what are you asking for when you're asking for socialism? Just a bonus fund based on just based on profit? Because that's easy. Uh, no, not necessarily, but I, I, I'm, listen, I wasn't trying to make any assertion about that. I was just trying to give you an example of, you were asking earlier, like, protecting his job right that. now. Oh, oh no, I'm being paid one, fine, boss. Like, I wasn't okay. asserting no, anything. <laughs> it's saying, yo, you need to put aside like 5% or 10% or whatever. I don't care mm -hmm. of your profits to distribute even mm -hmm. amongst your employees. Is that socialism? No, that, that would all be, it takes? That would be some aspect of socialization, especially if it's like earned by the workers that have I, some level of uh, of collective bargaining. It just seems so bureaucratic. I don't understand the workplace. Bureaucracy the still is very. I love that he brought up the position of a janitor because they're talking about splitting the profit among the workers, but the janitor doesn't produce any profit. What's funny Real, is that realistically, what's funny is people... that in an ANCAP system, he's an independent contractor, <laughs> right? Yeah. So the ANCAP system makes more sense for janitors. For janitors, yeah, it really would. Um, but like they they don't produce any profit for the company, so why should they get any money for it from that company, right? And realistically, if you just cleaned up after yourself, there's no problem. You wouldn't need a janitor. So, oh, that job's gone. Under socialism? Uh, socialism just cleanses the earth with laser beams. <laughs> Very much at the foundation of an, a, a bourgeois state as well. No, it's but okay. Like, but like, we, bourgeois we penalties I'm 30 minutes like, forward. This is 30 your, minutes you're forward. Right. You're we got to get to the China denialism at one point. No, I don't, I don't understand your... There is no mechanism in that situation where we... That's uh, the answer is capitalism. Yeah, so we just sit there and we expect the government that... Uh, that is, you know, appointing people into positions of power that literally have a material. Oh, no, listen, we expect the government to enforce certain regulations and restrictions that they do not because the people that are placed into that position of power have no interest or need in placing said restrictions or maybe even lack the know-how. People in the company do that. don't want to make less money. So the, maybe they don't have access to all the data that well, the CEO Well, the beautiful has. part about that is that at least historically speaking, what you're describing has never happened. What I mean by that is when you look at the UAW, for example, it is supposed to be in their best interest to be anti-EV. And yet for some reason, Sean Fain and the UAW is perfectly understanding of a- Why? Well, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang, on. hang on. Hang on. Why? Why would they be anti-EV? I don't know. Is the American the auto union, union yeah. workers, right? Like, why would you be anti-EV? That's like oil companies being anti-renewable energy. Mm. Like, what know. do you mean? You open That's an entire weird. an entire subsidiary inside your fucking like organization? Like, what do you mean anti-EV? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you what know, reason? we know oil is dying, and you want to divest your money to continue having profits. Of course, mm. the union is invested in EV. Mm. And it just makes logical it's sense. It's that or lose all your power. It's almost like they know more about the auto industry than Hassan. No, <laughs> funny how that works. <laughs> It's almost like he's a 
uh, what'd you call him? A Nepo, Nepo baby, baby Twitch streamer who Nepo should not be fucking listened to about politics. <laughs> <laughs> purely socialistic hierarchy where where they That's make true less. there's there's cooperative where corporations people, uh, hey, like, yes. where they make less like mondragon is a good example hey, hey uh, that's uh, what uh, have they on. been uh have they been levied with the task of deciding to make less money to help the environment yes when absolutely uh, not not to, not, to, not to help not to help the economy but they my have... point is that saying one is better than the other is just theory you know yes well we are talking he's a theory about chud simply theory i think because a strong we both agree EPA, that capitalism doesn't work i think a strong epa is great work. in fact i think you'd still need it it's EPA not great in a but it country. works i don't think it eliminates the need for the epa agreed 100 which is what Look what i was China. saying is in that socialist <laughs> formation there is actual real mechanisms of control that can put a stop to this kind of thing nothing he is talking about is based in reality yeah we see it in nothing. china china has mechanisms like, of control to put a stop to pollution <laughs> yeah and do they it's almost like it's worse <laughs> it's almost like it's worse if you don't have a bureaucratic <laughs> system with checks and balances and the mm, more bureaucratic I mean, like crazy it's almost like the checks and balances and uh withholding like the the uh what's the restrictions on government are a good thing funny rather than uh rather than power accumulating in the hands of the few at the top of the corporate structure that then make these decisions i think make these hiring practices in theory, to get these people great. in the revolving door in theory what i you're think saying in, is in great. practice it would be great as well I think in practice you get the soviet union who is a small group of people centralized control at the top deciding how the entire country works not just a company you fucking moron they're taking the money. It was a yes, serving it, capitalism. The, the dingus gambit is that uh, the utilizing dingus gambit. It, it's just like <laughs> utilizing the the. Uh, Dang was the leader. The that interests. Did of, oh, that was his name. Dingus. No. Dang. <laughs> Dang. 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 Dingus. Um, uh, is that uh, you can take advantage of uh, Western society has uh, has has this uh, division of power where uh, there's a there's an imbalance there where capital owners and their their capital interests are uh, better represented by their bourgeois government so oh they my. will bourgeois they penalty them, you know cheap manufacturing and then take <laughs> their ip uh and and start slowly but surely developing our country through uh through rapid urbanization like taking all that foreign capital and like building roads uh building hospitals how did that go for china how are those and, roads and going? whatnot how, how, about, how did it go for like to, kuwait and the uae and saudi business. arabia you know like those are still one party states i mean dude do you know how socialist the uae actually is if you think about it like it's like they have an entire like lower slave class that they import mm. for workers and like yeah. basically if you if you're a citizen of that country you get a cushy office job and just make mm. a shitload of money right that's a socialist yeah. state yeah they import the workers that like you said a socialism would work under monarchy it does mm. Mm. it does it's called the uae that's, and it is a that's, fucking that's capitalist funny. country <laughs> that's really funny because at the end of the day just eliminate the working class <laughs> at the end of the day you need a gdp Mm. And, and that's just how modern society works so if you're not producing anything for a profit and creating a gdp you're gonna have problems but also at the same time i think that we should nationalize social media and the government should own it not mark zuckerberg maybe it's still independently run as you know mm. i'm not saying like china how they basically own their own internet not like yeah. that like elon a billionaire should not be able to shut off the internet no that that is for ukraine is yeah I do agree. Material conditions in doing as a collective. So, in doing so, mm -hmm. they've also entrenched themselves in a capitalist. The main reason is because social media can't Enough. make a profit. No. And that's why. Same with news. Nationalized news. Like PBS yeah. and stuff. Mm, maybe. Totally, right? But to an extent, and I think to that extent, it was a great benefit to them to operate in that middle ground. And I'll say this, since that's happened, uh, you know, that's when you started seeing all these Chinese billionaires, which is not a good thing, I'm saying. But because like it's you but, but, but it's global capitalism. That's that's the that's the inevitability 
it's impossible to escape global capitalism under a global capitalistic structure <coughs> unless you are forced to exist or operate outside of those boundaries in the form of like Cuba. Like Taiwan! Well, we both agree on a realistic uh, <laughs> approach. So in that sense, we agree. that That's why I believe social democracy is the way. But, you Here, know... AB wrote something if you want to read it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were saying about how the CCP... Oh, you, I didn't see the second part. Since established in 1921, CCP has proclaimed itself to be a Marxist-Leninist party and has consistently referred to its system as socialism with Chinese characteristics. Which means In essence, CCP nothing. views itself as overseeing a transitional socialist state. The thing is, I can actually, this call it a whataboutism here, all right? But one of the most important events at bringing about American progressivism and true leftism is how I like to call it <laughs> is when Lincoln took the DOA, the declaration of independence, which says, you know, rights, you know, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Right. And he said, the bill of rights is designed to produce and protect this. Right. And he linked the declaration of independence, a meaningless document to the bill of rights. You want to know what that did? Nothing, yeah. nothing mm -hmm. technically, but it still changed the thought and way we run our country that those we now we look at how much like the modern even Republican brain thinks about that, that it's like life, liberty, happiness. It's like it's all me, you know, like mm -hmm. that's kind of what the DOI enshrines. Right. Yeah. So it's even in American thought and culture. So. In a theory, you can do these types of nothing things like socialism with Chinese characteristics and what Deng Xiaoping did for that country matters a lot. And like, the thing is, is like, uh, especially like a lot of people, like, obviously he committed massacres, but like people are committing massacres all the time that we totally support, you know? So it's like, I, I just don't think that there's something or anything wrong with him as a leader you know at the end of the day he moved the cool. country forward unlike mao yeah which only moved it back and now xi is moving it back long way back so all the progress that china made has been undone in five years but trump could have done the same thing you know mm -hmm. like that symbolic yeah. linking of the declaration of independence to the constitution like Trump was even uh, totally down to rip up that constitution. Here, here's a, you ever see this quote? You're going to love this quote. Hit play. I'll pull it up. Working towards the eventual realization of communism. Because communism is a bit different. It's not like when you have like a strong central leader. No, communism no. is when, when after a successful uh, stage of development in a transitional socialist state, where, uh, where the socialism the, is um, when the government scarcity problem has been stuff. solved, and, and it's more uh, socialism, and, and there is no the more in stuff like, it uh, does, capital and if it does a real lot of stuff, eventually it's withers communism. away, uh, yielding a borderless, moneyless, stateless society. It's the Star Trek future you were talking about Trek, earlier, yeah. yeah I'm sure but not China as well. Entirely. Oh, look, it's pretty solid. Okay, pause. <laughs> they covered everything I said. All right, you're gonna love this quote now. I just, I just want to point out that China is a fascist state. They're closer to Nazi Germany than they are the USSR. The all hawk, you know, this guy, this is the guy mm -hmm. who made Pakistan nuclear, basically yeah. ripped up the constitution, targeted minorities and turned it into, he was the Modi of his time, really, mm -hmm. except he was a military commander and helped commit the genocide in Bengal. He says, what is a constitution, a booklet with 10 to 12 pages? I can tear them away and say that from tomorrow, we shall live under a dis different system. Today, the people will follow wherever I lead. All politicians, including the once mighty Mr. Buto, will follow me with tails wagging. Fascist as. Doesn't that sound exactly like, so, like some comedy bullshit, though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no difference. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of funny that Hassan is talking about this theoretical communism of borderless, stateless, moneyless society when China is an ultra nationalist ethno state who loves their borders so much they'll commit genocides to keep them. 
Mm. Ask the Tibetans how that border dispute's going. Well, America committed genocides to expand them. That is true. That's called that a whataboutism. <laughs> the point to the gap to between the party's rhetoric and the realities of it, noting the prominence of capitalistic practices, the wealth gap, and the and the absence of political freedoms as Please, challenges I want to their characterization to as a transitional thing. socialist yeah. state. But isn't that just like okay? But we kind of agree on that. So let me ask you this: um, one of the reasons that China is able to govern so effectively, and we agree, they get shit done fast. Yeah, and that's how Do part they? of again how their economic growth was so um, so quick and strong. Yeah, they can act. They don't have to be bogged down by Congress. And I shit. mean, this can is I, what I, I say with Lenin. You quickly? you can it's like. You can condemn Lenin and acknowledge that he built up an industrialized state very quick and effectively with no mm. outside help. You can acknowledge, you can do both. That is, yeah. That like, it was good. It's like we can say the founding fathers of America had good ideas while calling them fucking war criminal slavers. You can do both. It's easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really isn't that hard. It it's is a dangerous you, Go ahead. Now do it with Hitler. Let's hear it. Go ahead, Jack. To do what? With Hitler? Yeah. Free education. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Free education. Same as the communists. Capitalist countries are also uh, reckoning with, for the record. And under a capitalist country, <laughs> if they want to continue con uh, consistently competing with China, for example, one of the things that the EU did recently was uh, talk about the government-backed subsidies in, in the form of EVs and how Chinese development is impossible to compete with because they're offering insane subsidies that offer Chinese EVs and, and is like basically uh, destroying the EV marketplace for European car manufacturers. Hi, don't buy Chinese electric vehicles. They blow the fuck up and they're built that's, with slave labor. Child only, slave labor. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. And plus, what does the consumer the consumer want? You know, like the Italians aren't going to be buying the Chinese EVs. No. And but the, if, the the Ital was... if the Italians start producing EVs, those are going to be nice. Yeah, I think so. Um, Come the, on, Maloney. The... I did a I did a big thing on um, EVs in Australia, and I used Norway as the the example, as you fucking should, right? Norway is the example now. Norway they have a lot of, don't they have a lot of hydro hydro buses as well? Hydrogen, I think so. Yeah, but like they they got EV uptake by offering subsidies, and I said that the only way there are three ways that people are going to adopt electric vehicles in Australia specifically, and this would probably apply to America as well. Billions pumped into EV infrastructure. We're doing that. Subsidies on every electric vehicle that isn't made in China. Because if you, if you subsidize you'll Chinese see, vehicles further, hold on, hold on. I was if just going to say, further, that's also being done. It's just not every vehicle. Yes. So if you and this is this was my my proposal is that if you subsidize and remove taxes from electric vehicles that are not made in China, then you get people in mid to high tier electric vehicles for the same price mm -hmm. as on a Chinese electric vehicle. And the rebuy rate, if you get into a mid to high end EV will be far, far, far higher than if you got them into base level garbage Chinese cars. This is literally, literally, the Biden policy on EVs. Mm. Like this is, and it's it's good. obviously it's obviously like because you're saying as a theoretical idealist type perspective. There's obviously sure. bad parts of Biden's EV policy because yeah. that's just how bureaucracy works. But the target goal is to buy new mid to high end mm -hmm. cars that are obviously yeah. if you're buying mid to high end. It's not going to be from China anyway. So it's even if it's a Euro producer, it's mm. still driving the EV market forward. Yes. So, because yeah. like my my whole thing, uh, especially with the electric vehicles, that because um, we have a thing called a luxury car tax in Australia. Any car over seventy thousand dollars becomes a hundred thousand dollars pretty much straight away. So that was one of my main things: is get that the fuck out of there. If you want people buying EVs, remove the luxury car tax get rid of it and then further subsidize them again to make them the same price 
or cheaper. Like if look, if if I can go to an MG dealer, buy one of their garbage little EV four wheel drive things for fifty thousand dollars, or through subsidies by the government, can go and buy an Audi. I'm going to buy the fucking Audi. There's no fucking chance I'm going to even look at the Chinese one. The On top of the fact that the BYDs well are blowing the fuck up. Get, don't ever buy a BYD. Ever. You know, the infrastructure is also the big part of it. Yes, it's, it's a massive part of it. And so that needs to be built up by capitalist rich mm -hmm. motherfuckers first. Yeah, yeah. Because they're the ones that are going to be willing to, like, test the new product. Yes. Yeah. And that's, so. that's, that's the problem is again, it's, it's a, um, and this is and another thing that I found is a study that was done, uh, out of five categories of people, the only category that wanted to ban petrol vehicles completely in favor of electric vehicles were rich people who were already going to buy electric vehicles. Yep. That's it. That's the only and, category of And people. the only people who want to ban meat are already vegan, of course, yes. Jack. Come yeah. on. This is just like a wider point. It's like these people are exactly like Hassan, where they are this, this elitist sort of upper class fuckwit of a person who wants to fuck everyone over to claim they care about the poor, but realistically they don't. They just want what they want because they think that they know more and this is exactly what lenin was as well manufacturers so they want to create an investigative team and and stop that from happening somehow or possibly even implement tariffs By now, the way. that in and of itself makes the chinese centralized planning structure significantly better Wrong. than capitalist ones in the form of global trade no. that will create in no. my opinion a very scary future for Western liberal democracies, where how do you implement that kind of central planning, which already exists, but how do you make it worse? Fascism. Okay. Yeah, that's what China is. That's what I'm China's fascist. afraid of. Oh my God. Well, I mean, China's China is not that far off. Why do you think I made it? the joke about I mean, Georgia the, Maloney the, being the one to pr With finally like, produce I mean... the nice EVs? <laughs> You're missing it, but Maloney didn't miss it. She understands it perfectly. <laughs> Maloney! <Watch. laughs> A very scary future for right. Western liberal democracies where how do you implement that kind of central planning, which already exists, but how do you make it worse? Fascism. Okay. And that's, well, that's what I'm uh, genuinely afraid of. Well, I mean, Barbarism. China's not that far off from it at, in its current state. Thank what you, do you mean? Ethan. With like, I mean, they have yes. basically a, a yes. all-powerful leader. So Everything's excited. owned by the government. The only difference is they're not at war, basically. That's the only thing. They've been at war! No. They are building their military. Yeah. And threatening countries like Taiwan. They're, so they're pretty close to fascism right now. They're, they're building their military uh, government but, rules but, culture, done, but what they've done business. with that military is very different than what uh, the American military is. Okay, whatever. They, they, don't have, they, they have a large military goes. and they're threatening. It's always a hypothetical. Please bring it's up the same. China's not that far from fascism. It's the same with... It's like right China's there. not that far from fascism, America is literally 10x the Nazi Germany fascism. Oh my god, you're so an actual agree. fucking China's idiot. Close. America... I told yes. you he'd like it once it got to China, man. He's I heard some dumb shit. I had to turn it off. Like, yes, America is a nationalist country. No, it's not completely nationalist, though. No, I know. You have a choice. There is I nationalist, know. though. But China is an ultra-nationalist, yep. genocidal ethno-state. They are the literal embodiment of what Nazi Germany was in World War II. The only difference is they're not invading Europe. They're invading uh, Muslim minorities and decimating them. Oh, committing cultural genocide again. Uh, Tibet, uh, Hong Kong, threatening Taiwan, which if they invade Taiwan, they're going to genocide the Taiwanese natives too. That's great they're going to get a two-for-one deal on genocide. Mao, how Mao is not as fascist as Hu Jintao. Not Hu Jintao. No. Chen Kai shek. All right, Hassan, let's hear all about why China's great. Because they have what? the they have you the said one they built a military, but they haven't even That's fucking not the used only thing it. I said. They have a government control oh of my business, God. manufacturing. Okay. 
Did he really just say that it's they It's almost like the, the Chinese military? military is needed more for state control than expansionary control. Crazy, isn't it? Okay. A social life of the press. Okay. Okay. We have one strong These are leader. authoritarian. Uh, yes, these are authoritarian constructs for sure. And then but fascism the only thing has a... missing from that is basically a, they have they have a national they have strong nationalism. I agree with that. And they yeah, have a, and the only difference basically now to go full fascist is if they were uh, invading countries. Which I, they're threatening to do yes. right now. Not necessarily. However, I don't think invasion is necessary. Like I said, India is a fascist state. Yeah. No, fascism is not necess necessitated on invasion. Also, the, the other Jack, thing... stop. Wait, wait, wait. They are, though. <laughs> they're invading Africa in the same respect that Russia and Turkey do. Oh, no, I know, I know. But so that's... they do invade countries. They, they're, more, they're technically more fascist than India in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, I also, go ahead. I also wanted to point out um, that China literally has a, a parallel Aryan thing yeah. called the Peking Man that yeah. they think that they're not human, they're above everybody else. Yeah. Right? So that's another aspect towards um, basically Nazi Germany for China. So on the on that same metric, you realize that the only difference in America is the <laughs> is the simple feeling that you are free and that you have all manner of different freedoms. My we like, have free we do have freedoms of expression. We have freedom to say we have yeah. freedom of I agree religion. We have yes. freedom of assembly. Those are big deals. But I know material, you don't think you you don't you can literally buy an arsenal for yourself in the United States. You can buy military equipment if you wanted to in the united states for hassan to say that there is equal little freedoms in america to china is one of the most retarded things i've ever heard him say what am i doing here in the middle of the ocean surrounded by frozen corpses <laughs> that is such an insane statement don't want to no, those, no, no. Those this are, is a huge deal. Yeah. Of course, it's a, okay, of course it's something I, I don't I, want to put words in your No, of course, it's something I willingly back. recognize. Yeah, this I'll is why I say, back. like, I'm not living in fucking China but right now. It's I not like there's, I don't it's think not like it's they're on own cities. To say, well, oh, America is. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not being an American. You know, Hassan only recognizes. Uh, so Hassan's the belief in freedom is literally, you know, the Marx line, how it's like you can fish on Saturday, eat fish on Tuesday, you know, pay a guy for hamburger on Wednesday. You know that line in Marx? I think so. That's what yeah. Hassan considers true freedom. Economic freedom is something that we measure. <laughs> and guess where China is? <laughs> <It's> Syria. <laughs> American like, fascism, like China's China fascism, is better. Than okay, American here's fascism. the here's the difference because fascism, okay, fascism is supposed to be a a means of control with a with a. Oftentimes, capitalist uh, understanding oh, of the shut economy, up. To, in, not in, necessarily. In to China is the capitalist. They're a hundred percent capitalist. <laughs> he's literally saying China can't be fascist because they're not capitalist, mm, and he's yeah. also he'll also recognize that they're state capitalist. He said it before. He's that's the thing. He's DC current. <laughs> organizing the economy capitalism doesn't have a lot to do with fascism i don't think capitalism has everything to do with fascism no I mean, capitalism you're, you're striking on one of the biggest uh, political philosophy debates of the 20th century capital right? fascism okay, so, is, is restoring right. order is it by by i don't you think, know yeah. i genuinely don't think i don't son i knows don't really what think the nazis is. were capitalist when i think of like, no they weren't they weren't they were as I don't stereotypical consider, as this is, I they were nationalist socialists. I don't also, which I, is fascism. I, I also don't consider them socialist at the same time. It's a separate category for me where Gaddafi sure. and Baathism is. Right? Yeah. It's a, it's literally a third economic way to me. I mean, isn't that what he called it? Well, that's a thing. The third way is something that is fascist. Yes. Mm. But that's why Dugan like, is the fourth way. Because, mm. like, Hitler, he had socialized stuff. Like, um, everything was nationalized, right? 
Well, also, of course, because he believed in building up his people to build a superior race. Exactly. So, it's so like it was for the wrong using... reasons. Yes. Which is how Baathism is as well. Yes. Yeah. And it, but it's still a socialistic system. Yes. Whether you want to like that or not. Yes. It's almost and like people, it's almost people, like the no, economic system has nothing to do with the political yes. system. Because people people don't realize like let's use the political compass, right? People are like, oh, Hitler is the far right. No, he was center up. No, they normally do put him center. Yeah, because that's exactly when where I he was. It. Yeah, he was a centrist fascist. <laughs> the third way. Yeah. yeah they're, Whipping they're, the fucking masses. A lot of people define when, fascism that, as capitalism in crisis. Yes. And so no, so those people are I fucking think dumb. about it more about like, um yeah maybe it's maybe it's like capitalism gone fucking no. totally on no, the rails fascist. maybe yeah, yeah. Erdogan, Erdogan is Erdogan is fascist. Fascist. capitalism mm -hmm. then greek has had the, fascist the on one the one thing that connects them all is ultra nationalism poland is getting there hungary we might say is possibly possibly i, I don't know much about there's not them. The thing is, is that there needs to be a lot of ethnic minorities, I think, for someone to truly become fascist. Mm. Without the ethnic minority concept and having an otherized blood liable yes. thing, I think you don't get to true fascism. And India has that for sure. Oh, and yeah. so does Turkey and China. It's just, it's the Sikhs mostly, mm. right? It's, it's Hindu nationalism. It's just anyone who isn't Hindu because there's yeah. Muslims there too. Yeah, yeah, in the north. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, all throughout the country, really, because yeah. India has such a high population density that uh, that is true. Like that's very true. Yeah, there's minorities in like every city, mm. and all of these supposedly they, populist they, leaders like money Hitler and Mussolini, war. who that's started true. off as like supposedly quote unquote socialists, or even like you know uh, interested in 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 higher levels of socialization. No, that's not what happened. Mussolini, Mussolini was, was a syndicalist. Yes, he was. Uh, he got his ideas from Sorel, who got his ideas from Marx. Marx is the root of every evil ideology that's ever come. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, if because like, and this is the thing, people no. are like oh, syndicalism. It's like there's a worse one. What go on? Machiavellianism. Fair enough. That's fair. And Saudi Arabia is a Mach Machiavellian mm. country, for yeah. example. Um, but yeah, Mussolini was, yeah, a syndicalist, a Sorellian. A Sorellian? C, 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 C. What? That's, the, that's his building. It just says C, 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 C on it. <laughs> it means yes. Have you seen that fascist building that he has? No. I think it's... Would not have worked alongside capital owners and they, destroyed trade unions and communists okay. in general. Those were the first people that they fucking butchered. Okay, fine. I don't care about uh, capitalism. I mean, I'm a social democrat. So, or in terms of like how a uh, fascist, I just saying, I, mean, I don't think... About social democrats I, in Germany, there's I also think, contention there, but... I don't think Chinese fascism is better or worse Chinese than American fascism. fascism. Why, why is that funny? <laughs> because I don't think that... I, I do not think that China is fascist. I think that they are Cluster, authoritarian... Close. I don't think China is closer to. You don't think that because you are a fucking moron. This is the building I was referencing. Oh my god! Isn't that great? This is the most fascist building I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a poster, but it's on the like <laughs> fascist headquarters. Awful! Isn't that awesome? That's what I was going. See, 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 <laughs> see. Um. Yeah. I. I just. He doesn't think it's fascist because he's one blinded by his own stupidity. And it's two, just like it's just like how ANCAPs can't recognize that they're close to fascism. Yes. And basically are fascist because this word socialism exists in Nazi yeah. socialist. Here is where it's like it's more so uh, expansive in its own limited area rather than global imperialism, which is China's done with the express effort with the, the bat, Taiwan, 
They're always <laughs> okay. Expanding. Well, now, if we're going to talk about Tibet. The fact that if we're going to talk about Tibet and Taiwan. You think it's you want me like, to, okay, because it's their territory. Seems do you want me to, do you want, no, 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 no. Do you want me to describe not, it? I don't want to get into the Taiwan thing. Well, I don't want to get say to Tibet and Taiwan and then not expect me to, 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 to <sighs> explain the nuance. Just, I'm not ready for this tangent. Because, okay, Ethan, but like, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Tibet was literally a fucking feudal. Uh, Ethan slave, literally uh, just said this. I'm in Spain without the ass. Pretty much. Pretty much. Like, I, I also though. did you did you catch that he's like, oh, you think it's okay because it's their territory? Which means Hassan, if that logic is true, and that is why, Hassan would support the Trail of Tears. Because <laughs> no, his he he would rec because everyone can recognize that Taiwan belongs to the indigenous people and they were also genocided. Everyone mm. can recognize that. Yeah, yeah. Taiwan is also wrong. Of course. Guess what? Guess what that means, though. Do you think mm. that's the point? No. The po the point is is just that it's, it's saying when you say China has done nothing wrong, you're an idiot. When you say Taiwan has done nothing wrong, you're also an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the the preeminent point. And Hassan even said this is that the like the nature of and the formation of states is typically violent. Like mm -hmm. South Sudan didn't get made out of a peaceful solution. You know, they're still in chaos because of their formation of a state. It destroyed that country probably yeah. for many decades. Maybe even a century before we see actual development in South Sudan. And they yeah. have oil. Yeah. And that's that's the craziest thing. Yeah, so that's why we need the EU development. We need a pipeline in there to fucking get cash injections. We also need to build more stuff like the Americans do to break. AKs are a bad idea. We need guns that break. Why? Because the entire reason South Sudan is still in conflict is because they have AKs. Because the AKs don't break? Yes. <laughs> Right. I mean, they would resort, they would eventually get to the point where they were using like machetes and stuff mm. that happens. I mean, it happens in Ethiopia now. Yeah. Yeah. But the um, point is, the point is, is like, it's more of a joke that like, it's better to, it, it is better. Like as far as like the arms smuggling and arms index planned up lenses is good with weapons, especially with yeah. like nuclear weapons and stuff like mm. that. Uh, uh, in, like so autonomous was, zone China. well china should sell them guns because their guns are probably garbage well they also <laughs> have don't aren't one of their aren't, don't they have like an m16 copy you know uh, uh probably all right let's get through this and china did them a favor that was one i mean <laughs> in america when i say something like this people get very upset you know we, we talk about the dalai lama saying suck my tongue or whatever but like that's not far from the norm and gone we have an episode on it. I don't need to say anything about it. <laughs> we know this is a Chinese normal. misinformation. Like he's trying to paint uh -huh. the Dalai Lama as like a pedophile. When yeah. it's like, and guess guess who sucked down this propaganda? The fucking libertarians. Oh yeah, because they're obsessed with pedophiles. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nobody's and, more and obsessed with pedophiles yeah. than mm -hmm. libertarians. Yeah. Well, Tibetan well, existence before the Communist Party came in. And and so China over. unilaterally took over to why did he say that? Like, what does that have culture? to do with anything? The say Dalai what? Lama saying that. I don't know. I think he just wanted to get it in there. They basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture they're it, trying to squell the religion and the, the part identity. The part of the part of the warlords favorite. and slavery. Ethan, it's called cultural genocide. Use the correct term, please. The Cherokee had slaves. I'm sure a lot of the Native Americans did, no? No, they no, no, no. Have, the, uh, Cherokee, flight, no? the Cherokee are a specific example. Their oh, slavery... Okay. Their I, I, slavery swear, I swear they took... Their slavery just, continued just, after after the Civil War because they weren't Confederates. And, uh, then they now, and then they revoked tribal status of anyone who was a Cherokee slave that was freed as well. So, oh, shit. yes, it's a very big deal. Interesting. Abolishing that, yes, I do think that that is good. No, China did them a favor. I think that, yes, Hold I will be on ever, but, like, that's not far from the norm in fucking normal this is, Tibetan existence. This is, before the attitude, this is the attitude that caused the Taliban. 
thinking they were doing people favors by taking their yeah. land away from them and shit like that uh-huh. caused the Taliban. More than American weapons and funding <laughs> did, that's for sure. Or the Communist Party came in and, and so China took over. unilaterally took over Tibet. Like well, these are their culture. They basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture, they're it, trying to squoil the religion and the, the part, identity. The part of the part and of the warlords and slavery, abolishing that. Yes, I do think that that is good. No, China. Did oh them no. A favor. I okay. think that yes. I Africa. Will be on next. The... Africa next. You heard him. <laughs> is he saying that Tibet was full of warlords? You heard him. Was... Killing Gaddafi was based. You heard him. He said it himself. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? Invasion of Iraq justified. You heard him. <laughs> Get rid of warlords. Taliban based as fuck. Hassan pro imperialism. <laughs> Hassan pro Taliban. The record just like America did it. That no, while the Chinese it. government, wait, I'm not going to say it. Well, there is no there is no equivalent in American intervention that you can point to in a similar capacity, unless you're talking about okay. So, ta- and I think this is a good uh, this is a good way to describe Taiwan as well. The American federal government going into the fucking south and killing, unfortunately, not all of them, but a decent amount of slavers <laughs> and defenders of slavery. No. This is no. violent retribution. You know why it's not? You know why it's powerful- not the same? Because antebellum still exists. And antebellum isn't a country or a society. It's it is it is a, a philosophy, mm. right? It is a type of philosophy and superiority complex. It is the pure distilled formation of American fascism before fascism existed. It is a pre-fascistic fascism, mm. and it still exists today. Yes, mm. that's the difference. Is that the nationalists in Taiwan largely don't exist? Not to the point that they did before. No, they have nothing now. Yeah federal government on, Tibet, that, that it squashed thing? that squashed okay Tibet is the south in the civil war also yes. that's stupid because Tibet, Tibet was a different country with different people they weren't there was the same they were all european colonizers that's so stupid it's like you're not also like i'm sure because he's turkish you can find better examples of turkey doing this you know <laughs> than america more comparable stuff you know like the Ottomans definitely did this kind of shit. That, that he like... just said that uh, Tibet is the South. Yeah, which is inaccurate on so many levels, including the one I just pointed out. Unfucking believable. He is an actual awesome. moron. Like and and like as far as Taiwan goes, like uh, all I remember is I know that he's going to eventually say it's like why wouldn't they have a problem with an American base off their coast? What mm. American base off their coast? It's almost like how we don't have, and it's almost like how there's also not a Chinese base in in Cuba. It's almost like you don't do that, mm. right? Yeah. Even though there's plenty, uh, even though everyone is working who's against the United States with Cuba because it's the closest enemy asset that they have, right? What does the United States do? They definitely try to do something about it. They tried an illegal invasion at one point. We can definitely say that happened, right? And nobody is a Bay of Pigs defender. Mm. So, like, uh, there was plenty of actions that the United States did on Cuba that were also unethical. Like, at Mm. the end of the day, if you're a communist, you're going to agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't, like, if he brings up Cuba, that just displays more DC current. But I even think that he (laughs) knows enough not to go there because it's, comparable and everyone would agree that everything america did with cuba was also bad and would be bad if china yeah. did it to taiwan yeah exactly and i think that's why he doesn't bring it up in the in the time frame where chinese intervention happened would be the south yes so they were doing the, slavery the they moral were aspect of the war of, of china the interests uh are are obviously like national security or whatever the fuck they uh, claim the but same. but ultimately the reality was uh that beyond the the uh material benefits that yes they were a feudal oppressive uh, uh slavery backed uh, state uh, autonomous region he is literally repeating chinese propaganda also they went in there occupied genocided and stole a child <laughs> but the whole thing is, is like you know how many things you would be describing if you were talking about like a feudal slave state like I said, Africa next. 
Yeah. It's almost I mean, like developing countries kind of have that type of system. It's not like it's not like they were like antebellum in Taiwan, you know? Like antebellum were a privileged, super hierarchical colonizing class. Mhm. It's so absurd. Like even in like Mauritania they had slaves until the 70s. They still have slaves in the Gulf regions. It's insane. just not called slavery. It's 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 like legal enough to not be slavery. <laughs> it's uh slavery is banned unless you're in prison kind of thing. I was about to say that's exactly what was in my head. <laughs> yeah, literally that. You're right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So just like just like um Russia's denazifying Ukraine. No, Thank I don't you. agree with that for the record. I don't think that Russia is denazifying Ukraine. If anything, they they will end up nazifying Ukraine in the long run. Mm -hmm. If you want to point to a modern <laughs> He's right. <laughs> no, I know he is. I'm just laughing because Russia is the most connected country to most Nazi groups around the country, around oh, the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it's insane how many neo-Nazi groups Russia well, is what, connected All he's to. saying is that he truly believes that Tibet deserved it and they were morally evil. Yeah. And that's because he's a Chinese bootlicker and is sucked into all their propaganda and probably thinks that the Uyghurs are all terrorists too. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> In a country that you could probably fairly characterize as fat uh, yeah. modern Russia, contemporary Russia being a capitalist nation state built by are oligarchs they, that like were anti-Soviet and anti-communist. Are anti they an oligarchy though? That, at this point, uh, at deep... this point, are they capitalist though? No. Don't they, you need capital to be capitalist? Like it's not capitalism. It's just not. Deals with Western bankers and, and Westerners. Except they don't get originally services. Uh, leading up to <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why it's fourth way. It's Duganism. Mm. To the dissolution of the USSR so they could literally pick apart the entire country. Vladimir Putin being another primary example of this. Okay, good. They're fascists. I would agree that Russia's interests are significantly more fascist than the outcomes are because they're in yeah so it says eurasian uh eurasianism was based on a combination of third worldism resistance to westernism championing east cultural superiority over the west and defined eurasia in geographical terms shared by people of russian turkic heritage Ooh, so there he, he's calling for an, an alliance with the turkish nationalist they aren't gonna have it sorry mm. dugan <laughs> That would be a really strong fascist alliance, though. Yeah. Because, like, the, the whole Nazbol thing is they think that Bolshevism was great, except for the fact that it wasn't nationalist. That's, like, that's the whole thing with um, with the Nazbols, which is super, super interesting ideology. But, like, fascism. <laughs> Interests do not lie around improving their productive forces, or, or the abolition of, like, uh, like what Russia is doing in Ukraine is no different than what America has done in Iraq. Like, oh, we're bringing no. democracy. Like, they're not denazifying Ukraine. It's fucking no. bullshit. Come on. Whereas, I will not say the same thing well, about, like, uh, okay. that. Well, first oh, fault. I need, I need to hear that again. He was comparing it to Iraq. Saying that Russia invading? Is like America is invading like, Iraq? It, them denazifying Iraq was like America saying, or denazifying Ukraine is like America saying they were bringing democracy to Iraq, which is not uh, true. No, that the, because the George wording... Bush had a philosophy, he believed in domino theory, right? The same thing that got yeah. us into Vietnam. Yeah. He believed that if democracy was installed in Iraq, that everyone would be like, democracy is based, we're going to be democratic now, and it would turn the mm. entire nation democratic. The Soviets also believed that. So actually, Iraq is more comparable to shit that's been done in the Cold War than it is yeah. Ukraine in this regard, because mm. it was more ideological-based instead of expansionist-based. Ukraine, yeah. in, 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 Ukraine, this war is more, it's like I, like we said, it's more closer to like, conqueror type napoleonic mm. hitlerist yes. type expansionist stuff which yeah. is the same with china in that regard those types yeah. of things are rare now i mean it's, it's but that's that's kind of what i say what hassan said is basically what i say is uh, but i say it in like a uh, a snarky sort of sarcastic way where it's like well if you oppose 
well, if you're pro Russia but oppose Iraq, a uh, pro pro Russia invading Ukraine but against America invading Iraq, where is your head? Because they're the same fucking. Thing. Here's the real thing. How about the people? The, the 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 thing is, is that there's more people that I encounter that are pro Iraq invasion anti Russia invasion. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's probably a better way to to look at it, actually. Yeah, hit play. The because Americans support the invasion of Iraq as propaganda, but but most of them just hmm? Russians didn't have a choice to support no. or not. No. Americans did. It was the most protested war in history. It's true. It so very true. There are obviously differences, and I do I do say it sort of a little bit tongue in cheek, but it's like the point is still there. Their interests do not lie around improving their productive forces or or the abolition of like uh, like what Russia is doing in Ukraine is no different than what America has done in Iraq. Like, oh, we're bringing democracy. Like, they're not denazifying Ukraine. It's fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I will not say the same thing about like uh, well, Tibet. Well. Like, no, I I'm not saying one I think is it would be a disservice. Other. I think it'd be a disservice all... to Ukraine to make a comparison between like modern Ukraine I'm just and that feudal there's, there's Tibet. A, you can create a pretense to take any anything you want, you know. Yeah, but there are but there but, are also yeah. but you agree, like, for example, the the federal government uh in the Civil War did the right thing, right? It was very violent, but they did the right thing. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, good. So let's talk about Taiwan then. Because Taiwan in its formation is uh created by the kmt uh that uh or kmt general uh cheng hai shek i'm butchering the his name i think that was close but uh, <laughs> I think it's a close no it's fine that. and it's you got it formation it was, was a military dictatorship that was fascist openly fascist openly nationalist and there was no surprise there that uh the american government was backing them Right in its entire inception, I, I, Taiwan admit, now is very about, different than that. Yeah, I don't know a lot. But about but it. this is very important but in the Taiwan context now, of like talking about Taiwan. So should they be invaded for how they were? Absolutely founded? not. Right. Absolutely not. Because hey, guess what? Everybody was when America when America down. builds you up to be a nation as a counter uh, counterbalance or a, uh, or a, as a as a the real uh, China as we did originally. That's why we were in support of Taiwan because they were nationalist, fascist, military dictatorship that was brutal. Uh, they just went they got owned by fucking Mao uh, mm. overall, right? But at a time losers. when, and, and, and at a time when, um, yeah, one hundred percent. At a time, and they were butthurt losers that believe that like Mongolia is also a part of Republic of China. They have more expansive desires, more expansive territorial they desires than Mongolia. Than that, well, they, they can't invade? do anything. Well, their, yeah. their military, well, according to American generals' assessments, was fucking dog right. shit i think taiwan's a better example then so but so taiwan but wait i'm not ready but taiwan and its inception <laughs> tangent is out of control wait but, but like you're you're you want me to just we'll go back to it these things don't happen overnight if you assume that it's like a war between good and bad or that it happened overnight it materialized out of nothing then yes it is that is infinitely more susceptible to western framing to be like these are the good guys these are the bad guys they want to do this thing and then you make comparisons to like reasonable wars or whatever and then all of a sudden, Reasonable we are wars. not factoring in the understandable, whether I agree with it or not, doesn't matter, the understandable desires of national security from the Chinese nation state that is is in an openly contentious yet still very favorable trade relationship with the Western world. Why the fuck would they want a American military base in a nation state that was developed by America, originally a fascist, nationalistic uh, brutal military dictatorship. Why would they want that to be an American base one mile off their fucking coast? Okay. Maybe China should stop fucking threatening them, you fucking moron. Maybe that would solve the problem. Are you fucking dumb? I just. It's so painful to listen to. I'm in Spain. Uh -huh. So, do you think this is a good model? Um. Do you think the one party state is a good model? Because the outcome of that one party state is also massive human rights violations across the board. I mean, I don't think that uh, I think that America is a one party state. I don't care about America. No, but it's important to understand because Please like keep the one party that. state is an inevitability under any kind of formation Stop of the government. Him from the government is going to yield results that are either positive for the people 
or negative for the people. Even if it's marginal, there is still a difference. Even if it's marginal, there's still a difference. For example, abortion, which I consider a human right. It's it's marginal. I agree with you on that. I think that it. But I don't want to talk about America. I want to talk about China. Well, the reason why we're talking about America is that. to put it into a framework that is understandable. Oh my god! Shut like, the fuck that, up. That's the only reason why I always bring it up. People always no, 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 no. You always bring it up because your one goal is obfuscation. You don't want to address the actual points being brought up because you know, you know. That's I know the, that's what has. Uh, I love it because Ethan knows that. He's discrediting Hassan's ideas mm. just by him doing this denialism yeah. about China. Yeah. He's keeping him away from the whataboutisms. Mm. And that's exactly what he should be doing, because at the end of the day, we know Hassan isn't the dumbest person. He's pretty dumb, but he's not the dumbest person. He knows enough that he could possibly have a rational discussion about this, but because he's such an ideological fuckwit, his instant reaction is to go yeah but what about america it's the same thing that every tanky does it's so tiresome and ethan is arguing exactly how everybody should be arguing against these people if anybody goes yeah but this you go i don't care and just bring it back around do not let them divert the argument do not let them divert the conversation you need to hammer it in because these people only get away with their ideas because they are allowed to do whataboutism. We say, Hassan, your only assessment on the situation is America bad. It's significantly more nuanced than that. The reason why I always go back to America is to help Americans or yeah, Westerners under understand, understand uh, Chinese governance. I and how understand it's, what you're not saying. all that different. They, you Hassan, say they don't just pretend Chinese to have government. a two party. Yeah. Now, now, I disagree with that. I don't think it's like super, super wrong. I think there are marginal differences in the parties. And I do think there's space potentially, although it's super unlikely, it's happened in American history for a third party. It's probably never going to happen again, but it has happened before. Yeah, the Civil War. And so, but like the, the consequence the greatest, of the, the greatest what, material on. differences. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, but the greatest <laughs> material differences were ever I represented in American history was during the Civil War. I take and, back the la, 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 la. Okay. The greatest material differences, like genuine material differences in the form of how to produce cheap commodities like cotton, okay? Well, in, in uh, the northern states, uh, they backed the abolition of slavery. Southern states didn't. That was a major point of contention. That was probably one of the last. Who farms China's cotton again? <laughs> it's 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 wig of slave labor. Cool. Last times where there was like a who real buys it? Not America. <laughs> Not anymore. That is true. Also, the amount of slave labor controversies that have come out from American companies using Chinese slave labor is insane. That's why there's this whole thing going on with Lula right now, and I'm like, mm -hmm. what are you actually doing though? Like, where is the Supply Chain Act? Why are Americans so stupid that they don't fucking care about Supply Chain Acts? It's insane. You know what you would else? think that COVID would wake people up, right? But but Supply Chain Acts... Let me, let me explain what they are real quick, though. Okay? If America passed the Supply Chain Act, a company who exports labor to China would have to maintain OSHA regulations. In China. Yes. Interesting. Isn't that awesome? That's fantastic. You know why it happened? Because of that garment of that... factory collapsing mm. in Bangladesh. It was a German mm. company that, that happened okay. too, right? So it's it's not only it just it's not necessarily a legal measure, it just makes it so uh these companies can be sued if they don't provide mm -hmm. these things. It opens the door for the most privileged of people to represent workers that are disenfranchised in other countries who can then levy suits against companies when their families die. <laughs> you know, like, you know, in UAE, when they're like, how many people died building that fucking World Cup stadium? No, it's Qatar. Uh, yeah. This World Cup stadium. Uh, yeah. There's literally like bottles in mm -hmm. the bodies in the foundation, you know, they yeah. saved over them. Pretty much, That's yeah. the type of shit that it prevents. That's what I need to see from joe yeah, biden that, realistically that's what i want to see that'd be good difference in an agreement i guess a difference in opinion that led to a very violent uh, conquest of the south that wanted to secede and was forced to not
um, the one party system in China does result in a lot of human rights violations. Does the does the ends justify the means in that case? I don't think the so. Control. I don't think it does. Okay. I think that in in Cuba, which also has a certain restrictions on civil liberties, for example, uh, there is a, there is a better argument to be made that the ends justify the means in Cuba, mm-hmm. because you know Cuba is an island that has been under embargo, and uh, since its inception, since the Cuban Revolution, after we it's you inception. know we backed Batista and wanted to make sure that ensure that Cuba was still a tourism destination and sugar plantations with slavery. Wait till you uh, find out lost. who we China need... backs in many of these places. <laughs> like, hey, give us some examples. Oh, you know, I mean, America does it too. I mean, mm. everyone everyone backed the Tigrayan genocide, for example. You know, it's not yeah. just China and a lot of these things. But, but there are all the, there's different warlords and shit all throughout the world different business owners all throughout mm-hmm. the world it's it's like the thing is is that america at least has the excuse that the capitalist class is separate from the government china doesn't yeah. everything everything yeah. that their economics do in the in the global south in the developing world that they so-called There's love top down is well it's just the responsibility falls on the government not the individual companies Mm-hmm. Now, this is where Lula is based and actually cares about developing countries and wants to be Brazil to be the country to uplift them. And he will be. And China won't be. And then uh, real socialism will come and tankies can shut the fuck up. <laughs> Watch. It's going to happen. I'm telling you. Okay. He at least said, okay, fuck this shit. Cuba, you, we are going to do everything in our power to stop you from developing. In that he situation, it's a tiny island nation did. that is in the ash cheeks of the largest imperialist superpower on the planet. It's understandable to have certain, uh, it's understandable to have certain restrictions on civil liberties. Whereas, or not, and by the way, ironically, Cuba is like way better on abortion, gay rights, and whatnot, which we can get into if you want. No. But that's a that's a consequence of direct democracy, <laughs> even though Cuba is a one party state as well. Okay, like. I mean, there's plenty of cute. I know plenty of cute. I'm not, and again, I'm not super familiar with that the politics, so I, I don't even want to speak on it necessarily, just because I don't know a lot. I do know that a lot of Cubans that I've met fucking hate the Cuban government. Yeah, because they're in America. They're not like rich. They're like no, no. It doesn't matter. They're, well, that, they're okay. So they're like yes. they don't have to be rich. They're, refugees. But they're in America. Whoa, no, in asylum seekers and refugees normally don't like the country they came from, but still have a nationalist Crazy. identity. I should nationalist. I meant to say national identity. Whoa, would you believe it? Syria, Syrians that are displaced in an asylum don't tend to like Assad. They also mm. tend to broadly align with like Turkish gray wolves at this point because they're so <laughs> the fucking Turkish brain pill has infected them. What's funny is I, I saw uh, 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 because they'll do it because they have I, I don't give a lot of I excuse them not liking the Kurds because the Kurds technically sided with Assad to protect themselves. Mm. Right. They didn't willingly put themselves through another genocide like Idlib. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because Idlib just can't side with the Kurds and form an alliance, I guess. Maybe if they could actually form an alliance, the Kurds would have sided with them and actually built up a really cool state. Anyway, they were against Azerbaijan invading Armenia. Like, Syrians empathized with it because they know what it's like. So it's like, okay, good. Because it was, I was like, finally, something where it's not Turkish propaganda pill, <laughs> you know? It was nice to see. It gave me a lot more faith in, that I've lost in many people. That mm. I know. Like they had a disagreement in the lightest terms. They either were forced to uh, to run away, or literally had, in the lightest terms, a disagreement with the Cuban government. Mm-hmm. So of course they are uh, not going to be fond of. Uh, Why were they forced okay, to run away? Cuban. So. Uh, but- government. Oh, because of American sanctions. Sanctions, right? It wasn't the economics. It was the American sanctions preventing the economics. That's right. Same with Iran. But the. <laughs> I was almost expecting him to lump in the current Cuban migrants and uh, refugees that have left uh, with the ones that initially left, the ones who did the Bay of Pigs, the ones who were co-opted by the US government, the the the, the landowners and the, the slavers and that sort of stuff. I was almost waiting for him to say they're no, they're no better than them. Because that's the take that I would expect from him. 
government. Isn't there, a, when you're looking at a country like China, who's a the whole thing of like development of a state is to eliminate like any identity. Uh, Pakistan, for example, we were just criticizing it under Ziel Haq because he came in with a populist structure and eliminated all of that. Mm. Uh, Pakistan was founded in the vision of a guy many consider fascist, Ataturk, but uh, Mohammed al Jenna, the founder of Pakistan, right? He founded Pakistan to be a, uh, that, that's why Pakistan means, like, you know what the, you know what the word Pakistan means, right? Like, I've talked to you about yeah, this. It's yeah, like yeah. all the minorities stand. So it's mm. like recognizing that it's a state for minorities that had no place in India, yeah. right? Like, that's the point of it. That existed. Like, Pakistan's point was to be a diverse Muslim country. Indonesia as well, there's even, like, Suharto, right? There's definitely mm. a nationalist identity behind that as well. But Indonesia is one of those countries with what brings them together is Islam. Mm. So there's another way to do it is that sometimes it's multi-identities into one, you know? Like, obviously, Persia did a lot of discrimination against minorities. India, Gandhi founded it largely in respect to minorities and the Hindu fascists recently have destroyed that more than like the past has. Uh, I wouldn't say that like the foundation of the Indian state after the British was perfect or any to the minorities and there was equal rights all around. But obviously like the majority class is going to be the one who maintains the power and they're going to do things to keep their power. That idea of that they make something homogenous to keep the state together is kind of silly. Because even America, it was designed, even though they were all white, you know, British people, it was designed to be more about ideas than culture. So America mm -hmm. is unique in that regard. So there are even states that are in what he would describe as the, like that hege hegemond or whatever he said, where it's yeah. like an, almost like an ethno state that defends like the whiteness, you know, it's just not the case. Even states that are ones sometimes aren't like that and they strive for diversity. It's detention for people who are religious, you know what I mean? Um, forced labor camps, they fucking, and I know you deny that they organ, they are organ harvesting, but I do believe that they do do that or did do that. Maybe they have a gong. Morgan Harvest. No, 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 no,
they cracked down on it only because of like the Adrian Zenz report showing that organ harvesting does exist. And it mm-hmm. has in fact happened at the Uyghur camps, which again can be chalked up to corruption inside the plant camps. Like you're doing an autopsy. Yeah. So you're not going to take like a kidney or something, you know, even mm-hmm. a dead kidney, someone will stupidly buy and implant it and then die. And it still gives you the <laughs> profit, you know? Yeah. Profit's still there. Bad it looks. You said that they you have know, labor they care, camps. China doesn't care about appearance. Oh, well, they do to yes, it. They they're do. authoritarian. They're, 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 yeah, they, they have to though. The the reason yeah. why the reason why the re-education camps have largely been drawn back, and we only see like the elite black site ones that we never knew about to begin with. I mean, there's still like people locked up. There's still Uyghurs locked up. You, we have the files. There's a million missing people. Yeah, it's, but the thing is, is like, is it going on the way it was back then? No, because enough pressure and attention was drawn to it that mm-hmm. it. The thing is, is that. To think that the genocide is just going to flat out end is unrealistic. It's like trying to end call minority oppression in Turkey or or yeah. India. It's just not going to happen, you know. But putting pressure on on India, like hopefully, will happen with Trudeau. Imagine if Trudeau is the one, you know, who finally <laughs> gets people to pay attention to India. Won't that be funny? That would be funny. That would be so good for our memes. <laughs> They have labor camps, well, they, said, which is, by the way, ironic because America still has a much higher prisoner oh density than any other nation on the planet. And slavery is not abolished in America. We can criticize the America Amendment all we want. Yeah. Well, my point is, yes, it's wrong in China as well, but it's of course it's wrong in China as well. OK, this forget is, about forget about that. I mean, like, what about the but what about, for example, now you're part- doing what about them, by the way? <laughs> no, I'm not. Ironic. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm specifically. Let's Fuck off, this, Hassan. You and now, fucking this moron. example, because it's the best one. The the Uyghur, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say their name. The tension you said it correctly. It's okay. It's... And eliminated their mm-hmm. cultural identity and religion. Yes. And also, frankly, as a, it's almost impossible to do that and not like think of them as others, where they also, you know, it are is. under horrible, horrible, uh, horrible human mass rights. surveillance, even including like certain uh, representatives living with people and, and families. Like some of this still is ha- like people happens. will say, oh, this is Adrian Zen's propaganda, and some of it is very real, yeah. one hundred percent. Uh, Don't there you was think mass it's Chinese propaganda? To... He's he's right though. They do say that. I know. This. I'm very very surprised that he doesn't harp on about that guy. Hassan? Like literally, the first time I heard about that fucking guy, yeah, was from Chinese uh, women. Just fucking drop it. Get over it. It's like when they um, who's the um, Mike Pompeo? They they fucking hate him too. Yeah, so. they hate him. They hate him because. The, he actually, uh, he he was a big part in the formation of the Quad. Yeah, but I think he was the one that brought a lot of attention to Xinjiang. Yeah, no, no, he's the reason why we got cotton banned. We exploited, we exploited the racism within the Republican Party to get the cotton banned. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Of course, we did. To be like, it wasn't as bad. I'm not saying it wasn't as bad. Okay, good. Because I thought but, maybe but, you said But that hold was. on, no, I think that my analysis on on the matter is is fairly nuanced but still incredibly critical of the chinese state i have never said that mass surveillance mass imprisonment even execution in certain instances this is and the china's outcome. development this is the outcome and china, of their homogenous socialist society the reason that the chinese nation state claims they did this and xi jinping famously even i forget when he said this this was a while back but basically said something along the lines of like we learned how to deal with uh we learned how to deal with uh, with uh, Islamic terror from the American nation state. They did. I think that it's fucking bullshit. But do you think it's necessary to maintain their socialist homogeny? It's not a socialist homogeny. Now we're talking about cultural homogeny, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, but it's all, yeah, but it's all it's connected. The, the, the separatist movement uh, within uh, Xinjiang. And and some of the aspects of that did include. It's fine. Uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, uh, look, here's the reason why I say it's the... fine. Nobody knows what East Turkestan is. I it's know. The same thing. When I was, it's funny because I used to be like I spent so much time in Syria. When I uh, just did that interview with Heavy, we kept getting like stuck because I was using like American terms like ISIS. I never used to use it, but I'm using it now <laughs> because of the audience that we have. So yeah. it's almost like we're speaking different languages. Oh, that's funny. Because like I would say Iran is doing this, but she would be saying the Shia militia were doing that, right? And mm. we're saying the same thing, but using different words to describe the words. same thing going on. That's pretty funny. Ugh, I want to fucking wrap this up. I'm so fucking tired. Everything hurts. Keep going. Ugh. 
I know. Like they don't have a lot of guns in China, luckily. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this, like, Maybe if they uh, did, the they wouldn't be in the state. That, Aaron uh, should have been dealt with on an individual basis, rather than dragnets and collective punishment for the entirety of Xinjiang, which is what China did and re-education camps and mass surveillance, which exists still to this day. Xinjiang or any kind of separatist movement in- Guess who developed, uh, for those who don't know, guess who developed the surveillance- Yeah, Australia as well. But I think think there is still plenty to blame on like, not America normalizing this or anything, Mm. but I think think it is reasonable. The thing is, what about isms to justify it have destroyed it? But it would be nice if you could talk about this happening in Xinjiang and say, how you could use people's uh because nobody likes the torture we did right if you could then channel it into also saying america was bad for doing this as well right Mm. you know and you could channel it to people's legitimate hatred for what america did post Mm 9-11 and and imagine how much more success we would have if that was the case if we didn't use what about themselves to deny that genocide is happening but amplify that genocide mm-hmm. is happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a perfect uh, analogy for it. But tankies are brain broken. So yeah, they have DC current. They should be banned from the internet. They should have their internet access revoked. <laughs> In Xinjiang has now been absolutely squashed, <laughs> destroyed, <laughs> eviscerated, and and uh, not only have they done that, but also on top of that, they've basically softened, like you said, or uh, I guess the term that Westerners will use is honified Xinjiang. Uh, and and have now and now use their like uh, uh, their their. Where else did they do that, Hassan? Is it uh, Tibet where they genocided, then moved Han people in to uh, what what was it? What was the term he used? Soften. I got you. Fuck wit. I got a great thing. <laughs> Soften. Jesus Christ. I call on the power of the almighty Joe Biden to own Hassan. All right, Hassan, what is Hassan talking about? You tell me. This new phrase. I wonder how many of us ever thought as students of World War II or as participants in World War II that we would ever serve in the Senate and hear the phrase ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing. Isn't that an antiseptic Turn. The same continent, in the same proximity, to the same death camp, it is happening again. Genocide. That's what it is. This administration and others who support it are afraid to use the word. What is our interest? Our interest is that history repeated itself. We're told we're not taking sides. I'm here to take sides. Mladic is a war criminal. He is no better than Himmler. He is no better than Goebel. It's Isn't it funny how you can swap just a few things? Like, uh-huh. forget about it's the same continent. You know, you could say G is no better than Goebel. is no better than Himmler. He is yeah. a war criminal. Karaj is a war criminal. And I might add the leader of Serbia, Milosevic, is also a war criminal. Although he's the only one not indicted so far. The Soviet Empire has collapsed. Now, this is relevant news. to what we said the too earlier. The is, all the ethnic hatreds, all the ethnic fighting are now uncovered again. There is war in Armenia, Georgia, and almost all of it is based on ethnicity. And what is the message we send to the world if we stand by and we say, we'll let it continue to happen here in this place, but it is not in our interest. What's so important about the Western Alliance? NATO for NATO's sake, so we can beat our breast. No, but I'm the about Eastern to say it's going to cause me great difficulty mm. if I'm re-elected and come back here as the ranking member or chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. Europe cannot well, stand the United without the United States. There is no moral center in Europe. When in the last two centuries has the French or the British or the German or the Belgian or the Italian moved in a way to unify that continent? When have they done it? Tell me why we don't have a moral interest. So let me tell you, if your moral center is oil, I understand you. If your moral center is humanity, there is no comparing the restoration of the Emir of Kuwait with the ending of genocide. Man, Joe Biden, that was crazy. Damn, they're cooking them. Their cultural output as like an export even. Like you could just go to Xinjiang and see 
uh, how how wonderful everything is, that kind of thing. Um, oh, here. Oh, oh can you, Hassan? Can you really? Is that from all the propaganda channels paid for by the Chinese government to make you think that it's nice so that you actually have this opinion that you then put out to your hundreds of thousands of millions of people who listen to you for some fucking reason? Maybe that's why? Have you seen the videos where they're walking around Xinjiang and there's Chinese agents following behind them to make sure that they only go to specific spots inside the city? Yeah, that doesn't happen, does it, you fuckhead? Anyway. Oh, you found it. God damn, that's so funny. Remember when- Mr. Xi urged the party to emulate aspects of America- Re Remember when there was people- The video came out of people sh shaven in chains, blindfolded, being led to trains in modern China, and it was shown to the foreign minister, and he tried to say, Let me tell you this, Xinjiang is a beautiful place. The guy was like, <laughs> that's not beautiful images, foreign minister. You know, like, that's literally their their comeback. It's like, have you seen? Shoot Hollywood movie here, Disney. Mm -hmm. Xinjiang, wonderful place. Look at mountain. <laughs> that's why I was, like, doing an Indian stereotype accent. I don't know why I was doing an accent. Because <sighs> I'm racist. We're on terror after. It's fucking, it, because it's, we've been doing this for three fucking bit, hours. Bit, bit. Dar, dar. Dar. Zanga, zanga. Oh, I'm tired. tired. September 11th attacks from documents leaked in 2019. Who cares about this? We know about this. Just to, just to frame this for people that aren't Dance. familiar with the skip, history, skip, skip. It's Dan Quick. Skip so hard. <laughs> just yeah. is that like whenever ah. I make a comparison to America, like if I compare <laughs> Russia to America, people think I'm doing that to defend Russia. And it's like, no, that you is are. the worst comparison I can are. make for a country's <laughs> actions because my opinion on American, uh, uh, the American superpower is, is that it is incredibly bloody and incredibly unjust. But the reason why people immediately go uh, and say, what the fuck? Why are you uh, bringing up America in this situation? Is because, because they are. inherently, without recognizing it, will defend American foreign policy because no. they are under the understanding. I, I agree most no. people do that. Yeah. No. So no, 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 no. Everyone hates the Iraq war. Like the, per son. the percentage of Americans that see the Iraq war is a good thing. You know, I want to see that polling data. You fucking find that for me, minimal. and I'll and you and then tell me that Americans, you know, will defend fucking American actions. Okay, mm -hmm. not only that, most Americans will amplify the death toll in the Iraq War. They see it as worse than it actually was. Fucking idiot, DC <laughs> current brain. So my que my ultimate question is: Do you believe that this um, cultural homogeny is is a uh, required in a Socialist or communist society. Yes, I think that some form of positive uh, okay, social cohesion needs to occur <laughs> if you are going to build a nation state. And this happens in Taliban public education. Equals faith. I'm, uh, I think that public education this is very is valuable. I, this is why I say, this is why I say all the time, the Islamic revolution in Iran and the Taliban revolution are identical to socialist movements. They are exactly the same. Their end goals are different, but the whole like Islam is what unites us, right? Mm -hmm. And also a huge class warfare aspect exists yeah. in these in these cultures as well. Mm -hmm. The reason why Sadr is able to have so much support in the region of Iraq is because of the poverty. Yes. Yeah. But it's it's also um in order this is this is the thing about communism and the thing about Marxism and the thing about socialism is for it to work, you need to break people down they, that entire thing was state the red terror. guards the red guards are no different than the boz or whatever they're yep. called in, in yep. like i mean the, the IRGC guard. and the red guards are exactly the same exactly they do exactly the same thing exactly and just because they don't exist in china anymore and there's a more official police force doesn't mean shit the chinese police force disappears people i guarantee you the irg here's another disappears people here's another thing though right so people are scared to do this condemnation of china because they have socialist tendencies and they see us, uh, china as a socialist state right you know i mean it does for some people but iran doesn't taint islam or shia no. islam even it does for some people you know sure. people who hate shias and stuff like being against china and being against iran are completely different than being against Islam and socialism, right? Mm -hmm. But people who are really into those, I don't want to say ideologies because one's a religion and I want to be respectful, but people really into those things are more likely, like for example, a lot of people, a lot of people who are really conservative Muslims had a problem with the Iranian protest because people burned 
their hijabs mm. and burned the Quran. Yeah. So they had they, they had problems. Well, I there I didn't see much. I don't know about the Quran burning. It definitely happened, but it's not like they like discrim disseminated it. It was to it be was a definitely more the revolution, like burning the hijab was right. And that was like a, a like, big guys, thing. She was killed for not wearing it properly. Yes. That's why yeah. it's it's not. They're not even. They're still Muslim. Like they're st- like these people are often still like not all of them because only a third is Shia Muslim of Iran now. Mm-hmm. But like there's people who are still Muslim that were choosing to do it. Because something's more important. Because yeah, believe exactly. it or not, the youth of Iran is extremely cur- progressive. Hundred percent in agreement. If it's being done in a more positive, in a more positive way through public education, then it's great. Right, but if not like not like, like erasing negative, their ethnic identity. Yeah, if they're doing it in a negative way in that situation, where like education moves way? to like re-education, example. a positive a, a positive component would be something that we unfortunately do not have in America either. Would be to uh to 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 have uh, regions that that still have their own uh, ethnic identities preserved through their own board of education and and uh, are allowed to exist. This is a major problem with the USSR as well. This happened in the USSR where there was a Russification of all the the nation states that were under the banner of the USSR, yeah. which ended up creating a fuck ton of division. Uh, and- Uh, And this is, it's funny that he brings this up and you brought up that Biden video where he's talking about war in Armenia, war in Georgia, war in all these countries. Do you know what the USSR did? They moved all their minorities to these Central Asian countries. Guess what happens when the USSR falls? Ethnic conflict. How surprising. What a, what a baffling thing to have happened. But also the USSR existed in a system where it was like the Russian language is superior. Yes. The intellectual class. It's just like Afghanistan. The intellectual class speaks Persian. Mm. So yeah, the Tajiks, the Tajiks themselves have this "we're better than these dirty Pashtos" type <laughs> ideology. Still to this day, and oh, no. and like rightfully so, with a lot of cases, because the Taliban represent Pashtun nationalism more than they represent Islam. I mean, the USSR, by its very nature, was imperialist. Even in the USSR, it was imperialist. That was mm. the one. That's the one big thing between the USSR and America that is that is there is like Russia is the country right the ussr was the the union yeah union of it was though socialist soviet republics right but these countries didn't have a fucking choice they were taken over on the push to berlin and then they had no fucking choice and then they took kazakhstan and they took georgia and all these other countries as well um which i think were there before uh world war ii anyway um you know what else they took Mm. There was an independent sovereign Kurdish nation in Iran that was a Soviet puppet state for a really? year. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's very interesting. Although there there are a lot of Kurds that are pretty sympathetic to like Stalin. Yes and no. Um, the th- like Ashalon, the reason a big reason for him being communist in the beginning is because the Soviet Union still exists and mm-hmm. America was backing Turkey. Yeah, of course. So he makes, kind of that, he kind yeah. of was more attracted to communism because he wanted the USSR to actually absorb Kurdistan because he mm. th- he he saw it as a way that would be more free than being under Ottoman rule. And that's that's fair, right? That's a fair assessment. And like for example, time. Armenia being under Soviet rule is better than being under Azeri rule. Mm. Uh, a a uh, uh, like suppression of religious freedom. Religion is something that is so personal and so important but for, isn't, for isn't human beings Mark's and their theory, identity. Isn't Mark's theory around like we have to get rid of a yes. religion? Um, that's no. That's I mean, he, yes, yes, it is, and it's that way because the only way to guarantee a homogenous society under a socialist system is to eliminate God, because the state is God. That is the entire premise under this whole thing. That's why it's a centralized collectivist no, it's, ideology. It's, it's the the fact that it's the fact that God is above the CCP. Yes. That's the issue. And that's exactly what I'm saying. And it's the same with Marx. It was the same with Lenin. It was the same with Stalin. It's the same with Kim. It's the same with all Rob's of them. Pierre. 
Yes, all of them. Literally, but the thing is, all is, of them. The thing is, is that Mullah Omar is the same way and still used God. Mm. That's the key. Di- that's like that's the only thing that makes these revolutions different. Yeah, it's very interesting. But yeah, that's that's like the the very very core of it is the elimination of religion because if there's a god, then the state's not going to be god. I mean, look at Khomeini and Mullah Omar. They're worshipped like mm. idols still, even though yeah. Islam is against idolism. The the I no, and also I don't not? even care what I don't even care what Marx's own personal perspective on religion is ultimately, because I'm saying I'm looking at real implementations of socialism throughout historical uh materialist socialist not doing it very accurately. You know, and i'm it's saying that that's wild. bad and wrong it is demonstrably bad it was bad in afghanistan it was bad in the ussr and it's certainly bad when china does the same exact shit so you're saying yes it's required but nothing different than what you see uh, in in countries today that's that's it considered yes. good by yes people. allowing people to have a national their identity own, allowing people to have a national identity while simultaneously reinforcing their their uh, you know ethnic differences or uh their diversity of culture is absolutely a necessity for nation state development if you want this nation state to succeed and okay, i'm giving you. an example of why it didn't work in i got uh, you in in the ussr by the way i would urge you to look more into the organ harvesting thing because i do believe that that did happen by the state they were harvesting the the muslims organs man like the wait time on the on the um there you go he's directing himself in modern china no, 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 hang on. no but listen you see he was talking about the wait time on how fast mm. you can get organs he ethan is wrong here till still he's close he's close because he can he's see that the wait time is turnaround for kidney donation that organ mm. harvesting does happen and and the thing is is like the, you're not you're not necessarily wrong by saying that because the state obviously was allowing it to happen yeah like just like they allow like women to be chained up in the fucking village Mm -hmm. houses and stuff you know yeah it as long as as long as nobody knows about it the regime does not care which basically is state sponsorship of the behavior Mm -hmm. and almost every state does it whether it's democratic or not it's very rare that a state won't know about something and let it happen in oh, any yeah. in, uh, an instance uh, like not nothing specific but like well, almost the thing every is, state... is that china does it for different reasons where they just don't want to be criticized yeah the united states will let things happen specifically because if they crack then if they crack down on it they'll be like you don't care about freedom and it's bad looking for voters yeah. you know like like they they had to wait until waco got to a point where they could justify saving kids <laughs> and stuff there yeah. you know they can't just stop cults when they form Modern China. I don't think. Well, it was modern China. It wasn't that long ago. But I don't think they're doing You're it. You're saying the state was harvesting the organs of, He's of correct. Muslims. He, yeah, who were in it, that detention camp to to uh, give to their citizens. That did the wait. Well, time. it was more that the organs were He's, hello. He, well, he said no. That's not, I, I disagree. That's what I've heard. They can sell halal organs to other countries. Yeah, but there's nothing there. They can put a price tag to get more money, but it does, there's nothing saying that they had to target Uyghurs to get those organs. They can just lie. Yeah. Any you can't tell if it's a whole all organ. And also oh, yeah. in the detention camps, they fed them pork anyway. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that he he was right where he's like, it is modern China. It was modern China. It just wasn't like within the last like ten, maybe twenty yeah. years ago, it was still happening. It definitely happening thirty years ago Mm. maybe 20 probably not 10 i don't have the figures in front of me but he said that it was happening in these camps probably 20 it's it's probably it's probably happening in the camps under the table type Mm. of thing because the oregon harvesters are crime bosses that already are going to be in these areas to begin i mean we see kids get kidnapped off the street in china all the time yeah cut the organs out of them too good Mm -hmm. kidney kidneys But Ethan's right. The wait times are too low. Yeah. One of the most cited pieces of evidence is the rapid growth of China's organ transplant industry in the early 2000s with much shorter waiting time for organs. No, no, no. See, he's talking about the early 2000s. He's confused on the own uh, own stuff here. It didn't happen in the prison camps. It happened before. He's hitting, he's got two conflicting narratives that are using the organ harvesting. One of them is the truth. One is the Falun Gong one. And they're competing inside his brain. Mm. Still more accurate than Hassan. Attributed this to the use of organs from executed prisoners, but the critics argue that those numbers do not match up. 
the prisoners of conscious uh yeah so it, that hey, also, I believe that sounds, crackdowns it, literally what? can't I'm sorry, if it was in the early 2000s. Not the yeah. Turkic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's called East Turkestan. You know what I mean? Right. It's not like my, my, the other side of my family, my mother's side is literally, their last name is Uyghur. So this is not like huh. random individuals that I, uh, like, I have no affinity towards that I'm saying, like, the Chinese nation state should oppressively fucking crush I'm just them. saying. It's, that so it's should. always additionally fun. And yet you spent three hours apologizing for China's actions. No, no, no. It's only been like an hour. The other stuff was <laughs> communism in general. Oh, yeah. No, no. He spent more than three hours doing it. In other, like in total. He's got a, he's get, he's going for the high score. Yeah. Funny when some fucking dumb fuck from Iowa is trying to tell me about fucking Muslim oppression. Why don't you care about Muslim oppression in Xinjiang? It's like, what the fuck are you saying? Anyway, sorry, I get very heated about this. I'm because like from Australia, so thank you very much. Just like people are merciless with you when they say <laughs> you're a fucking tyrant or you're a capitalist pig dog or whatever the fuck. People are infinitely more merciless when you deviate from the foreign policy norms oh, that have on. been oh, mandated come by on. What a, Americans oh, through what our no, It's just not type. true. Again, everyone hates the Iraq war. It's stupid. But also, like, come on. You want to say that Palestinian support is non-existent? Yes, people who support Palestine get shit on by Zionists. But to think that it's the worst out of, like, anything that deviates. You're so persecuted, Hassan. Like, like obviously, like, something like, uh, like, obviously there's Zionists, right? Yeah, and I know the Zionists say the same thing. Like, remember the Zionist lady? She said agreed with Pearl because Zionists were being censored. You remember that <laughs> with yes. the song that "Why Can't We Talk About the Jews"? That was hilarious, yeah. right? So it's just stupid. It's a stupid talking point. It's stupid. Free media. Okay, so in short, I think I got my answer on that. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Anyone right who destroys from the mainstream media narrative gets ridiculed. <laughs> oh, come on, bro. The entire conservative branch mainstream media narrative is now that the mainstream media is bad and you shouldn't watch it. You should watch <laughs> us where it's technically not the mainstream media. There's like not yeah, even yeah. a singular mainstream media narrative. Even if you're in the, if you're in the narrative of the mainstream, especially conservative, you are ridiculed more than somebody who deviates from it. That is true. And that you should true. be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. I want to move on to Taiwan. Okay, so last we're time, done. I, I want to move on to Taiwan. So last time, uh, we I just want to point out it's one o'clock. We're pretty far we're over already. The end. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fine. We can. We can. I, okay. I, I just, think this is very valuable. And very good. good. So I'm perfectly fine talking about this. Okay. Great. Great. Love that. So last time <laughs> we were talking about Taiwan, you had mentioned one country, two systems. What did you mean by that? China has been that it is one over-encompassing nation, and that uh, Ch Taiwan, uh, which certainly does want an independence movement or has a as a robust independence movement is simply chinese taipei the american understanding and the global understanding is the same that there is a different autonomous organization inside of taiwan an autonomous government inside of taiwan but it's still under the chinese umbrella my yeah. opinion on the matter does not deviate away from the american foreign policy on the matter mm -hmm. the reason for that is because it also does not deviate away from the Taiwanese, the collective Taiwanese understanding on the matter, which is that if there's two different forces here at play, Taiwan That's independence. Do you think? Hang on, hang on. Any blink in or how how much Taiwanese people do you think he's talked to? Uh, zero. Do you think he's talked to people who claim to be from Taiwan, bro? Did you I don't see think today? he. I don't think he's spoken to a single Taiwanese person in his entire. Today, life. So today there is a thing. So um. China spun this propaganda that basically like Taiwan threw a Chinese citizen in jail who went there, mm -hmm. right? And that was China's propaganda piece. The okay. prisoner himself goes, he's like, I don't care that I'm in prison because I'm still more free in a Taiwan prison than, a, than <laughs> in China. That's so funny. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. For the American state backs. Why? Because it would be incredibly disruptive to to uh, our, our largest trade partner great the people of taiwan want independence yeah in the future possibly in the future well, what the, the reason why they take that position well if you were to ask they them, are independent sort of chinese influence like without any sort of like mainland china influence 
would you want independence tomorrow? They would say, yes, that is the majority opinion. So, well, what they say is that, that we already have the independence. Well done, Ethan. They China say we already have China China on no point influence with over Taiwanese economy or government. And yes, they, they and yet, the, but and yes. And what's and funny is, is like, I think he was dead serious so when he said that he prepped this with chat GBT. I think so as well. I think he's 100% serious. Chat GPT. I always say GBD. Chat for some CCP. Reason. Chat G. But yeah. He, because you know why? You know why? Because they... he has the same brain capacity as Hassan already. It's the perfect debate <laughs> prep partner. <laughs> considered to be chinese taipei right because people doesn't want to rock the boat exactly the taiwanese and that is my perspective as well we are already independent so but okay. you believe that this is china's state so then one there's country no, two so systems. then there's no additional need for state intervention from western forces that well, but china is is you know that's so stupid china is what that's is, so um, stupid what do you like there's there's no need for western forces uh china's bullying all the countries there america's mm -hmm. helping all the countries there all not just them. taiwan yeah and every single one pretty much has asked them to do so uh, and and like again just pointing point like us uh, i think vosh might have said it or something because i was i was uh, scouting content mm. and he said something like basically no i didn't I, so I'm not. Do you see how I told you about this? Like uh, Biden and Lula shook hands and said they're going to care about workers or something. But it was like, yeah. they, and I was like, what about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, mm -hmm. Vosh said something like, "Like, isn't it crazy that our position in Latin America not long ago was just fucking all these people over, and now we're mm -hmm. like, actually like, you know, engaging in good faith and good policy with them? Isn't that great?" And then I was just like, I'm just thinking about like the Philippines, right? It's just mm -hmm. so crazy because like that is like the unknown american genocide that was definitely yes. a genocide as well yeah you know like people can debate the other stuff i recognize the other stuff is genocides too mm -hmm. but this one is one of those ones where it's like nobody knows about it and the reason like they tell us about the trail of tears they you know they teach you about that they don't teach you much about uh native culture i think in most of the schools though but they don't teach you about the Philippines war. Like I only recently learned about it. Yeah. And no, what I don't think there. it's something that they want people to know about. I don't either. They want them to focus on Vietnam and be like, yeah, me lie. That was the most fucked up thing the United <laughs> States has done. Don't look any further back in that region specifically. Pretty much. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Being a, a, a and Don't pause. Just what are they Vietnam doing? as well. You know, don't even pause. Yeah. I just wanted to say Vietnam as well. What are they doing that you would consider to be provocative towards the Taiwanese? I mean, they have military station around. They're making they're doing war games and shit you, like that. You know where Taiwan is in proximity to mainland China, right? Oh my god, uh -huh. it's one mile off their coastline. Okay. So whenever people say Ameri uh, China Pretty is obvious, though, what's China the, is violating their airspace? It. We know what we China says it. China, okay, the government even says it. <sighs> my prediction is he's going to bring up. You remember that those maps that we brought up? Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite That's what he's going to bring up. That's exactly up where this is going. Airspace. That is exactly where this is going. We should cut that specific that we're gonna fucking... clip. That section where <laughs> we, we bring should. up the maps. Yeah. And take Taiwan if y'all don't play ball. Yes. We because, don't need to pretend like they're not doing China, it. no matter if I agree with this or not, right? Because I want, I want autonomy for... Uh, uh, the people of Taiwan. I want them to do whatever the fuck they want. They have it. Right? They have more than so, autonomy. Yeah, I understand that, and I also simultaneously understand one the history of the the, the Taiwanese nation state being propped uh -huh. up, mm -hmm. and and why it was propped up, and more importantly than that, I understand that the Chinese government, which is a different government than ours, right? They are human beings over there that have their own concerns, oh, is it. not going to want a fucking American military base one mile off of their coastline. Mm -hmm. That is a perfectly reasonable thing to never want. And given the historical reasons as to how Taiwan has has been created as a separate nation state with its own expansionist interest in the Republic of China, the entire mainland China, including Mongolia, uh, it, that's like its founding mandate, that uh, it is understandable for China to not want that to happen. Which Get is to why the point. Constantly counter American saber rattling, 
with their own version of saber rattling. This does not mean that the Chinese state is nice. This does not mean that the Chinese state is is uh, genuine or wants to implement communism in Taiwan. in Taiwan. What? 30 U.S. troops are stationed in <laughs> There's Taiwan. There's no way you think that that is I mean, the I don't only know what, material I don't know what you America read. is offering Taiwan. 30 U.S. Taiwan's troops. entire standing army would not exist without U.S. support since its inception. Okay, but there, America. You say, you say America has a military base there as one of the, and no, that would be a no, 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 no. But I don't. No, I, no, they I'm don't saying I don't want it base. to turn. I do not want further <laughs> conflict. The people of Taiwan do not want further conflict, which is why the overarching uh, assessment is like we're independent. We want to maintain independence. We want to be fully independent, but we don't want to. You know why this boat. is really stupid? Gum. Because. North and South Korea are right there as well. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about, oh, Taiwan is close to China, and that's why China should be worried. Seth how, doesn't give a how much? Fuck how how far thing. apart is North and South Korea, you know? Um, how big is the DMZ? It's like a Ooh. kilometer. So stupid. even even closer. Yeah. So stupid. Very dumb. But it's like it also, and it's like it's if, so similar too because they recognize like the entire nation as their own, mm. right? But like if you if you really 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 think that China doesn't want conflict, and Taiwan sorry Taiwan doesn't want conflict, which they don't, maybe China should uh fuck off and let them be their own fucking country. But no, they are obsessed with retaking. The island that they never had control over in the first place. So if we're really talking about who is causing this conflict, this threat has been a persistent threat from China since the inception of the Communist Party. Since they took over. And even still, like, imagine, you know, like, for example, the Falklands War. Britain were the bad guys there, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, there's so many nations that have been created, especially, like, island nations that have been created because, like, exile happened. Yeah. Like, a, an island nation that has a government that controls it because they were exiled. Like, bro, remember, like, when they got rid of Napoleon, they go, mm. they went and they put him on his own island. Yeah. And they said, this is your kingdom now, that you can be the king of this <laughs> island. You know? And it was just, like, a prison. Yeah. Like... That's this is not an abnormal thing, and like the amount, especially like Caribbean countries, like it's just like to to not recognize that those countries have a right to be like independent as colonial states. You know, mm -hmm. it would be like saying that like if 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 China can care about like it justifies everything, everything, the banana wars, all that shit. Yeah, everything. Yeah, but it seems like if. China was to in, just invade Taiwan and like look, we're over. We're it would be devastating. It would be awful. Oh, you know for what Taiwan. always it says? Awful for China. It is, it's it okay would... when we do it. That's the problem, bro. Yeah, like it's the whole thing where he justified Tibet being destroyed because of slavery, right? And like Mauritania, like I gave as an example, like it was one of the last. It is the. It was the last state to outlaw mm -hmm. slavery, but slavery, like. It, it was known even before the UN, it was globally recognized that it had, was something that had to go, right? And yeah. the United States was one of the last countries to phase it out in, in that era, right? So the same thing happens with genocide. Genocide needs to come to an end. But also, like, uh, like we've already been in the area era of uh, territorial expansion. You don't think China was doing territorial expansion just because they weren't the same state? Like, what? Do you, okay, so if, if January sixth succeeded and they overthrew the government, everything gets erased and the United States can invade Mexico. Then, <laughs> like, what is what are the conditions for the justification in any of this? I mean, let's also not forget how expansionist China has been throughout history too. China's borders were not China's borders, and also years Hassan, ago. Hassan, what about Armenia? Hmm. Like the territory that Azerbaijan took was is everyone recognizes it as belonging yeah. to Azerbaijan. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same. Everyone. 
just like Crimea, like, everyone recognized it as like Ukraine, and they still mm. don't recognize it as a Russian state because they like, yeah. No, that's a, that's a perfect analogy for it. It's disgusting. Just when it comes, it it's, it's it just even like um, you know, the drone video where it's like a, the war, and then like the same people who are complaining about that being a war crime were celebrating mm. that there was like atrocities done on corpses during the Spanish Civil War because the Catholics mm. sided with the fascists. And it's like, where's your, you like you're coming at me saying like. I'm no better than nationalist because I didn't condemn it morally. I'm not going to tell a country defending itself what to do. Exactly. And that's where my stance is as well. It's yeah. like, well, Russia shouldn't have invaded if they didn't want war crimes. Yeah, to I'm not going to argue that it's like a war crime or not. Like, mm. you, it's, it's war crimes. It can be kind of one of those. I know it when I see it things. Yeah. And we already, and like, the, it's like people are just making like technical and justifiable excuses about it. It's like, yeah. would you just shut up and just like, like the thing is, what's what's also interesting is, is that I guarantee you, if you go through and you look at like uh, all the, all the people who have posted this, because it mm. got posted so many times by people complaining about it, yeah. then search their tweet history for Butcher, I guarantee there's zero results. Mm. Most of them probably don't even know what it is. Yep. Finally bad. Mm -hmm. It would be it would be disastrous. Mm -hmm. We are in agreement right there, right? Yeah, like, of okay, so we both want horrible, no yeah, further nightmare. bloodshed to happen, and that's what the people of Taiwan also but, but say sense, they want as well. You also kind of see where China's coming from. I absolutely understand why China would feel. Like, this is a major issue with their national security concerns. The, the example I will give you is this. Let's say, just like England and, and uh, France. Okay, before he goes on. Cuba, um, Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. So before, before he continues on his stupid fucking point, um, I, um, they don't give a fuck about America being in Taiwan. The only reason they care is because they think that they are entitled to Taiwan. That's it. That's the only reason. Any other, like, they don't give a fuck. They really don't. It's only their expansionist policies into the South China Sea that is now being pushed back on because America was asked to help that America's even there. There is no more to it. But like, it's very simple. But We've already lived through this. Yeah. with Cuba, right? Who in the modern age thinks like we we like any like it's not like I'm saying who's a Castro fan. <laughs> I'm saying who in the modern age thinks that the policy towards Cuba is like lame and we need to like repair relations. Nobody is like no, we need to bring back more sanctions on Cuba because they're still technically socialist. Uh huh. No, Nobody. most people will, like lift the sanctions. Yeah. Mm. Almost everybody that I hear to say yeah. lift the sanctions so because we've been through this with Cuba, this like warmongering, mm -hmm. we're gonna take you over, even launched an invasion on them. Mm -hmm. And it was bad, right? And this isn't a whataboutism. It's just saying, Hassan, you like Cuba, right? You know, it was bad then, right? Think mm -hmm. of Tawan like Cuba. I don't know. He's just he's so brain dead. It's not a shame because America didn't own Cuba. The Confederacy claimed it, so... <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> Tried to do during the Civil War because they had material interest in the cotton trade uh, uh -huh. continuing with uh, chattel slavery. Let's say they offered material support to the okay. southern states that wanted to secede, Hang on. right? In order to continue slavery. Hang on. You don't need to frame it with, like, we, where it's like, chattel slavery is fine, mm. that's not the issue. The whole thing where it's like they're continuing the cotton trade. Mm. What we have to understand, like, um, I think North Carolina, it might be South Carolina. One of the Carolinas is the perfect example for this because everyone was aware that slavery had to come to an end. But for some reason, one of the Carolinas decided that 100% of their state economy was going to be slavery. So they literally already couldn't, they couldn't do it. They couldn't just, like, destroy 100% of their economy how do they do mm. that right so it's not just the cotton it's the inst we shouldn't distract at the core 
issue, no matter how much, especially nationalists, want to detract from this, is slavery. It's 100% about slavery. Nothing else. Not about resources or cotton or power or bullying or whatever other shit you want to talk about. It's about human beings being slaves and the world recognizing that it was wrong and the United States needed to catch up. Okay, and they were actually successful to a certain degree because third parties like Imperial Japan were also invading uh, mainland America. Okay, mm -hmm. in this process, uh... so the Civil War ended in a way where chattel slavery continued in the South, and every abolitionist was executed, and they called it instead of white terror, let's say they called it black terror. Okay, they executed mercilessly and ruthlessly any abolitionist that lived in the South, and then. After years and years of this fascist white supremacist implementation, hyper-nationalist implementation, these southern states that had successfully seceded, okay, kept building a robust military apparatus through surplus military supplies You're and, and weapon systems that other countries that were foreign adversaries to the United uh -huh. States of America started giving so, them even uh, what more and saying, more so of this. Let me get this straight. Hassan's entire justification on all this stuff is like, imagine if a what if alt history thing happened. Yeah. That that pretty much tracks for his entire... And, it, uh, and also, it's not comparable viewpoint. because Taiwan denazified on its own. The Dixieland still hasn't. In fact, they amplified Nazism with the revivalism of the Confederacy and the KKK and all that shit. Hmm. So I don't know. He's just he's just big dumb. It's just I not just, comparable. No. It's stupid. It has nothing to do with Taiwan. No. And he's he's just justifying his support for genocide. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and then and and also said the real America is the South America. Southern states are the real America, and they will one day take over the rest of America. You're saying, and that they will inevitably. This is inevitably literally what the, the South America, believed, and that's going to be the real they America. They tried we help them and failed. Do that. And you're, then, you're saying Taiwan is comparable the to the Mexican South. American War. Hold on, Taiwan in its inception is identical to the South. How long after the South seceded did the <laughs> war begin? What do you mean? How long before? What a great comeback, Ethan! And the Civil War happening. I mean, there was there was, was a period, long. there was a there was a, a period of time. No, 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 there was a period of time leading up to that where there were abolitionist movements that happened. That's why people uh -huh. say that John Brown's like execution. <laughs> but ta Taiwan was, was independent was like a, a lot pivotal longer. point. I mean, they they've been separate for a long time, though. Yeah, I'm no, like, I understand. I which is why I'm saying, like, imagine if the South was able to successfully secede. He's flailing now. Again, what about Armenia? He didn't care about that. They can get genocided too for all he gives oh, yeah. a fuck about. Of course. Classic Turk. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and America and wanted almost... to take it back. <coughs> Northern America wanted to No, it Northern America is like, we're worried about our own shit. We can't fucking deal with South America right now, right? Like Northern America, the the you know, the the Federation, let's say, okay is now working on improving their own productive forces, doing trade deals and, and whatnot with the rest of the world. And they start rapidly urbanizing, what? rapidly developing, okay? And, you know, the New Deal only happens there or whatever the fuck. This is, Meanwhile, this is the Southern States are entirely propped up Hang by on. a foreign adversary. China took territory. I didn't tell Hassan that. What is the comparison here? China took probably more territory and land and killed more than even the americas possibly especially in the beginning because the people were just stupid and couldn't figure out how smallpox spread hmm. don't let the missionaries near you Hold That's on. How, Me, it's all it's literally me. the church's fault <laughs> <sighs> Because obviously China is w way more inhabited back then and mm. now than uh, pre-colonial America. Because like you, you have to think about like the shipping, the ship mm. resources to island hop all the way through those Pacific islands. 
Like, you know, I showed you the water snake graph and yeah. how it happened. Okay, so Xinjiang became a part of China during the Qing Dynasty in 1884. So they took the land and I, for what reason, I couldn't even tell. America you. was expanding at the same time. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Guess who stopped expanding? America. Every country on earth. Well, yeah, every country. You know, um, like you have little things like Armenia, Crimea, the Donbass. Like, sure, there's... Uh, Golan Heights with Israel. That's a great mm. one. You know, there's little ones. The Sinai. Like, there, there's little land and border disputes all over the place. And it's now people bickering over inches, you know, before yes. it was entire continents. That I mean, shit, dramatic. China is still expanding. Look at their conflicts with fucking India. Well, that's what I'm saying, is that that's fine. Everyone has border conflicts, you mm. know? And, like, the Golan Heights with, you know, like, Israel's taking territory. It's the micro and even though taiwan is tiny you know mm. it's like it's like uh crimea was also bad right yeah and there is like an ethnic cleansing that happened okay that is infinitely more powerful than northern america and and they kept they keep saying we're going to take over the entirety of america it's one america Okay. And okay, so because, yeah. because, the, because the Awful northern analogy. because the northern states are able to improve their conditions, have favorable trade deals with the rest of the planet, they inevitably get to a point where they want to maintain their uh, hegemony, they want to maintain their security, their national security. Do you think it would be appropriate? Uh, do you think it would be appropriate to rock the boat per se and what allow is... the South to continue developing and Hassan, continue having a they're talking about invading and, Mexico and, uh, right it, now. America. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. come on. It's it's literally that is the literal comparable thing. <laughs> it wouldn't even be the first time they did it. <laughs> like that's that's the comparable thing there is America threatening to invade Mexico. Yeah, you know, what's funny? The Mexican-American War, if I remember correctly, this is how it starts. Basically, America, this, it's for starters, slavery. It's the slave states need to expand to keep their majority in the mm -hmm. government, right? So they go to Mexico. I think Jackson does it even. And they go to Mexico and they go like this extremely low ball offer for like a bunch of this land. And Mexico is like, uh, no. And they're like, all right, fuck you. Then you're getting invaded. The entire like <laughs> offer of money was never supposed to be like legitimate. They purposely underballed them to justify a reason for invading. Yeah. Like it is, is the Texas? manifest destiny war. Was that in Texas? Yeah. Is that the Alamo? Is that all that shit? That's all. Yeah, that's all that shit. That's all mm. it's about. It was about slavery and land expansion, cool. which would be at the same time that China's doing land expansion. Mm. You think China didn't have slavery then too? Well, when was the last time America expanded its borders? Hawaii. Which was? Um, uh, Taiwan has been independent for a shorter time. We know that. Elon Musk likes to say it. And we also, like, um, a lot of people are trying to get uh, Puerto Rican statehood. Mm -hmm. um, That's not expanding its borders, though. It's already a territory. Yeah. Well, according to China, Taiwan is its territory, so. But it's not. <laughs> 1959 is when Hawaii became a state. Okay. <coughs> Interesting. <laughs> I mean, like I said, like if, if Hong Kong wanted to vote to go back into China because China was like super cool to them and was like because like Puerto Rico, like they would gain more like uh, personal and human rights. Mm. Like, so there's a lot of people. I mean, it's not like it's unanimous, of course. You know, there'll be some people that will be pissed off. But it's, it's going to happen. But the only reason it hasn't happened is because the Republicans want to preserve slavery. I mean, whatever they want now. <laughs> Inevitably, like you send, 
I don't you know. send envoys like Nancy Pelosi to Southern American states yeah. to fucking uh -huh. say, hey, look, there's they're democratic now. Like, yeah, sure, uh, they were designed around slavery, but they're they have a democracy now. And not just a democracy. This is Hassan. so off the rails, though. Like, not where not is just a democracy. Hold on. Not just a democracy, right? Taiwan is one of the yeah, most literally the best. functional the democracies best. in the world. And you are comparing it to the South and repeating Chinese bullshit because Nancy Pelosi went to Taiwan. Shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Just quit. Delete all your fucking channels and jump. <laughs> whoa, whoa, we can't say that. I think that it's okay, it's okay and appropriate to fucking uh, keep building their military make it as robust as By the way, possible the South seceded just because we were talking about it it was like three months between the war and the but leading up the build-up to that was yeah, significantly longer yeah okay so I, I i understand your position on taiwan i get that i get all that you know from a for a from a uh but i, I don't the but one living country in, two living in california is silly but, though because but living Kong in california you personally too. understand it right like living in a blue state you understand why that would be like genuinely uh like you would understand how blue states in america would have security concerns if like southern states had seceded successfully I agree. I and, agree. and kept saying like no the rest of america is ours mm -hmm. after they fucking lost too well i mean this was 70 years ago that taiwan that the yes separate taiwan now is not a fucking fascist uh nationalist I don't think, military i, I don't state. think that how it was founded matters at all. 70 years is not significant in development. It's of course it's that's my point. No, it's it's what, what do you mean? I'm not I, I don't think that you should be like, oh yeah, Taiwan was a years bunch of losers that went and started their own country and like uh so they don't not they're not entitled to a national to, to a national Okay. 70 years is not a long time for a country's development, but the fact that Taiwan was a fascist state until 20 years ago, and in 20 years they have developed into the most functional democracy in the world, is something to be said. Everything else he said is completely irrelevant. Well, like Danny, I don't think that matters. 70 years is, is, is a blip in time, in, in, as far as like... Also, what has China done in 70 years? Like, what's he going to bring up next? North Korea was ahead of South Korea until the famine that inevitably comes from a communist dictatorship. As far as talking about a fucking empire or a history that spans over, like... I don't care, but that doesn't matter, right? We're talking about human beings. Yeah, and now they're... Now they are democratic, which is great, and I understand their uh, want in autonomy and not being uh, under, uh, like, some form of... of uh, crushing civil liberties that the Chinese the, state will the bring. one country two okay. systems is yeah. That's so how about this Singapore separated from Malaysia in 1965 interesting does Malaysia have the right to take Singapore Hassan would say yes mm -hmm. well the Singapore crisis is really complex but basically Malaysia kicked them out they didn't have a choice <laughs> yeah and now Singapore is a better country than Malaysia. Funny. And I had Taiwan. Uh, under, uh, like, some form of, of uh, crushing civil liberties that the Chinese the, state will the bring. the one country, two systems isn't yeah. real. That's not a real thing. What do you mean? It's not a real thing. It's one country, one system. Like at Hong Kong. One, that's what they want to do. They say, they say, Taiwan, we'll do the one country, two systems. But that's, a, that's, that's propaganda. What do you... No, no, but that's the that's the American policy, which they did with China. They have... no, you fucking idiot. No, it isn't. That is the system that was promised to Hong Kong when the British gave it back. That was what was promised, and then China arrested and disappeared. He's going to start doing the strategic murdered. ambiguity thing. That's what he's setting up. That's exactly what he's going to because he it's the only fucking thing he has because his only argument is oh, I just go with the American policy because he's an idiot. He's a simpleton. He's a fucking moron. He has no clue what he's talking about. America said that they would not uh, support an independent Taiwan and that Taiwan is a part of China. But internally, Taiwan still has autonomy, which is what is currently happening. 
and the Chinese state sees it as uh, a, a uh, autonomous region that is still <laughs> under the Chinese banner that <clears throat> ends up getting uh, military support from, you know, Western forces. Let's talk about Ukraine. And then that's my final one. Okay. So we were talking about Ukraine and um, your, your position was that the support for Ukraine is 100% manufactured. No. That's what you said last time. <laughs> no, I think that all all matter of American foreign policy is greatly influenced by manufactured consent because of our interest in, uh, you know, doing whatever the fuck we want to do there, whether it be like bringing Ukraine into the Western sphere of influence or... Or, Ukraine uh, wants to know, come into the West. It, it's not. It's not genuine uh, it, because they want like genuine emancipation for Ukrainians. His son, so, Ukraine expert. Well, so last time you guys compared it, you said, "Well, nobody gave a fuck about Georgia when that got invaded." Therefore, you know the fact that anyone cares about Ukraine is feels like manufactured. It, it, it's not even just Georgia. But you guys know that, a... but you guys realize there's like a massive. Di- I didn't know anything about the Georgia war. I learned about it. Hang on. There's mm-hmm. a huge difference. You guys understand? Look there. There's so many arguments that you can make about this, okay? But the two largest countries in Europe are at war. When was the last time that happened? History is repeating itself. What? And Hassan, Hassan's like, oh, well, it's manufactured consent. No, Russia invaded. Very simple. It's awesome. And what, are we... Like it's 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 like it's like if in World War wait, let's oh, say no, let's mean, say World War hold on it's a big deal wait. taking a tiny territory in Georgia a country that people didn't even know existed Russia invaded the U S what you mean like <laughs> global fuel, food insecurity is being caused by a war in Europe the entire world is now paying people are starving and dying fueling a mar- migration crisis that's already being accelerated by climate change. Because the two largest countries in Europe are fighting, it affects the world, just like Taiwan like, will. Iraq, like, imagine, not so much. Imagine Iraq if... didn't really affect the world. You know, Afghanistan didn't really. really affect the world. Libya did a little. But like, imagine if World War Two was today and the internet was today, Hassan would be advocating against helping Poland. He would be pro Nazi invasion. That's what he's saying. Like that's that's literally what he's saying. Or he would um he would completely apologize and probably does for the mass rape that the Red Army did on its push to Berlin. But he like that sort but, of shit. But he won't excuse the rape of Nanking. No, because it was the Japanese that did it. Oh, yeah, 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 huh? Mm. Oh, but it wasn't the communists, was it? It was the the nationalists, not the communists. The communists ran like cowards. <laughs> Yeah, was, yeah, well, I mean, the scale first, like, is, fucking, is a five-day war. Yeah, it was five yeah, days they expected versus... Ukraine to drop in five days, and if it did, we probably wouldn't be talking about it. Because um, that's true. That's true. So, like, the, the, what happened was Ukraine mounted this uh, miraculous defense, and they've got <laughs> Russia, a fascist country, uh-huh. on yes! the back foot. And Thank we you. all like when fascism. Takes I don't. Battle. I don't think Russia is on the back foot. I think it's just like. Oh, I'm so glad you didn't oh, say. I don't think Russia is yes. only further no, no, he, I'm so glad so he didn't say. And, and, I don't think Russia is a fascist country. I'm so glad <laughs> he said. I don't think Russia is on the back foot. I agree with Hassan. I don't think Russia is on the back foot either. Mm. But also, you know, the United winning. States. Did, the United States may have taken the most losses in the Iraq War in 2004. Mm. But it took a few years for them to truly lose that war and start negotiating. You know, it was like between like it's like 2007, 2008 when the United States had to negotiate to end the war. Yeah. So the victories came early, but it still ground down and cost many lives even after the Iraqi insurgency won in right. 2004, technically, because they completed all their goals. I stand with the Ukrainian people because I pref- I like I think Ukraine is a is a force for good in the world. They're they're on. Um, can I can I just, I can I just stop you for a second? Because you said one hundred percent manufacturing consent. Like that's what you is, said. Nothing is genuine. I said one hundred percent manufacturing consent is a like leading role in this. If you want to amend and the reason it, why that's, that's no 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 fine. the reason why I take issue with this is because it's like it's like stating like I don't give a fuck about Ukraine. Of course I. As far as Ukraine being like a, a force for good in the world, who I don't care. I I really don't care. The thing is, is that Ukraine 
feeds so many countries like the government subsidies that are going on in food like uh, I, like egypt i think had to subsidize bread for like the first time or something i'm not sure a- ace will know but the grain exports that russia is holding up are just as bad if not worse than the invasion and war itself um Ukraine's main function in the world before this war was arms smuggling. And there is a lot, and they're taking it seriously. I'm not like trying to like defame Ukraine or anything. I'm just saying they're taking it seriously with the anti corruption shit more seriously than America is taking their corruption right now. (laughs) Like, I remember when they took over like the Odessa port, and like there's the, they like basically ended the corruption out of that port. And it was like, that was like where all the arms used to come from right after you're on my dawn. And that of course just went to another port because there's another port where this person didn't control, but they were, they can just bribe other officials to get arms smuggled. So. I give a fuck about people in Ukraine. Uh, I want the, I want the war and the bloodshed, the unnecessary bloodshed to end. Okay. <laughs> my assessment on the situation might deviate from, uh, you know, NATO, uh, like, bloodthirsty nato defenders or whatever they feel like we shouldn't even be doing anything in ukraine no i don't nothing no no i don't i think you don't think so no i think that of course there's a a, a necessary intervention yeah that that must happen i'm not saying that at all i mean i've fucking raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for ukrainian refugees like i'm sorry this is such a silly fucking thing that like not for you but i hear so much from dipshits online. Well, let's you get fucking the, well, cut this propaganda. Good, so you can say exactly Suck my what dick. <laughs> um, you know? So you you do Fuck. believe that America's actions in Ukraine are, are the right ones? I think that America's actions to a certain degree in Ukraine is understandable. It's it's reasonable, it's certainly what the Ukrainian people want. But I think America's interest in Ukraine I made a joke is today. not genuine. It's not genuine okay. emancipation. I'm sure it's, you saw it. Then the more that the day went on, the more I'm like, you know what? I actually don't think this is a joke. <laughs> when, I, when they said what will uh ukraine unlock when it gets to the next level you know and, and uh, yeah I, and i said come on willie p and then i was thinking about it I'm like <laughs> russia has used incendiary munitions every day since the invasion they use cluster bombs every day since the invasion if we can allow golden division to call in white phosphorus on isis even though we launched it and took all the blame for it. Mm-hmm. If we're going to allow Golden Division to do that, that's literally like, like that's literally like being like Iran, like hey Iran, let us know where you want us to bomb. You know, <laughs> like that's crazy. It Even though crazy it's different time. because they are like Golden Division was directly like U.S. trained commando type stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, but just they served the Iraqi state. The Iraqi state is still an Iranian back dictator. Uh, yeah. So more so a continuation of the bloodshed well, which is demonstrated not by me but by american politicians like chris murphy who have openly said on the record that for five okay. percent of our military budget we've been able to cripple cripple a foreign adversary's military oh budget my without god a single crazy american you mean one guy in the u.s government the is a neocon fascist wow oh, i'm so glad he doesn't rule the country as an absolute <laughs> dictator <laughs> Yeah. Always, they always pull out one example like it's cool. the fucking wow, end of the crazy. world. You mean there's a fascist in the U.S. government? Crazy. They have a decent amount of power, too? Crazy. <laughs> Except Says, the fascists I would say that that is profoundly successful. What are we doing in Ukraine? We're sending our refurbished old weapons and weapon systems to Ukraine. Uh-huh. We have to replenish those weapon systems. It's a never-ending cycle. Okay, of, because of... They're, well, the reason I ask is... Oh, my God. He really That's doesn't not... understand, does he? Hassan, they're paying us. Yeah. But here's the here's the thing. When this war ends, what president is going to be in power? Because there could because like you know like it's not like Joe Biden's going to live forever. But if the war ended tomorrow, <laughs> Joe Biden would do debt relief for Ukraine. I think so. Yeah. So that's one of the things that uh, when you're talking to Kafa, she said is like debt relief when the war is over mm. is one of the things that she was talking about, and it was the first time I heard that, and I'm like, she has a great point. Because yeah, they think, it, it you think happen. they're screeching now about the money we're giving to Ukraine. <laughs> That's when we'll actually give them money. Yeah. But he, he just, he doesn't understand. Like, 
all of the stuff that America gave to Ukraine is like 20 years old. They replaced, and they were updating their shit anyway. They literally had a contract with SIG to replace well, all the basic point, infantry that weapons. That he's saying the war is only going on in Ukraine. He thinks pe- Ukrainians are dying to sell more NATO arms. No, I know, and this problem. is what I'm explaining, is that the weapons being sent are like 20 years old, and the contract to renew the military service weapons and all of that stuff came up like three years ago. SIG can't just develop a rifle in fucking a month and a half. Uh, okay, it's such so, an insane but you know that that's the thing is, is that it's all a conspiracy because Russia knew that they had to update both. You know, they it's the you know it's Orwellian. They had to update their arsenals so they had to throw a bunch of ships in the ocean. Everyone knows this because because there seems to be a somewhat of a a sentiment in the left circles or or social. I don't know how to even describe it now, I don't know, but that that the. The proxy war people say in Ukraine is unjustified. Oh no, I know, but they're God. saying we shouldn't Fuck be supporting off. Ukraine. We in the have whole a thing name for yeah, I, I can't speak for other. Uh, I can't speak for other leftists. I don't know what the fuck they say, but uh, plenty of those people also despise me and say that I'm like not pushing Z heard, or yeah. whatever. So it doesn't fucking matter. I heard. I thought I heard Richard Wolf have some kind of thing like that. I don't. I can't speak on Richard Wolf either. There's disagreements that I have with Richard Wolf. You have okay, like. So you're da- you're down with what's happening, down. You're no, down with what's I'm happening. not down with what's happening in Ukraine because I want the bloodshed to end, and the only way to do that is by bringing China to the table, bringing America to the table. The, you think the Ukraine real should, actors here. You think you, Ukraine should, should make have... some. Uh... No, Hassan. The way to end it is Russia leaves. Yeah. There is only one solution, and it's um, Russia leaving. I'm so mad she's gone. What? That's uh, uh, Sana Maran. I think <laughs> that's her name. The old. Uh, uh, that's what they asked her a question. We're like, how does the war end? She goes, yeah. the war ends when Russia leaves. Yeah. She's 100% correct. Because at the end of the day, China has no place in the discussions. China, as Ukraine has told them to, should fuck off. Richard Wolf, because at the end of the day, mm. parasite brain. Because at the end of the day, um, China is giving. Russia lethal arms to mount a fascist genocidal invasion. Uh, we can't prove that. Just like we can't say Taiwan is an independent country, Jack. We can't be saying, come on now. They've can't be just throwing allegations that are going to get. said as much. We're not allowed to say it, Jack. China said so. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, it's, they've said as much. What, what, would, what did they say that their partnership was? Um, unending or, no, no, no. It was like, Unending you or must unwavering. You were wrong when your fingers were like dipped that. inside me. It was something, something like that. China was said that, and so, and then China comes in and tries to negotiate peace for Ukraine, repeating all of Russia's demands. So at this point, China is just Russia. Yeah, but that's it. That's but also keep in mind the negotiations in Saudi Arabia that China and Ukraine hosted together. That's so. That it's actually a good thing. An intermediary being brought in on negotiation tables like that, it means yeah, that we not can... China. But that's the thing is, is like it actually benefits us that China is in... Like Ukraine said the negotiations were beneficial that Russia wasn't a part of, right? So China is going to be part of the negotiation settlement, just like the United States will be. But they shouldn't be. Neither should the United States. I agree. But that's what I'm saying is, is that these things, it, you're never going to just get it straight from Putin. When yeah. it's beneficial but for G, we make it beneficial for Xi, he puts pressure on Putin, right? Why should we, why should we? Because we want the um, war to end. That's, no, no, no. Why should we give him anything? To end the war. Stop committing genocide. Maybe then you can come to the table. I, I if you you could end, if you could end the genocide immediately, which isn't what would happen. Not funding the war. It's not like Russia's going to leave, right? Mm-hmm. Russia holding these territories is is like the like the ideal goal is to take you know like even even uh Biden was clear about it at the UN General Assembly that like all of Ukraine is going to be taken back because. Um. 
until Ukraine says that they can't do it and they said we we can't we just can't do it. Yeah. Then it's not our place. Our place is to just agree just like China is doing everything that Russia says. Mm. Right? They're, we're both financiers. Well, I, th- I, th- I think that China probably has a bit more and say. And this is when people say the proxy war. This is the type of shit you could talk about mm. where these are proxy forces that it's not in the war, it's out of the war. Right? Iran, the US, everyone, Poland, Germany. The, those are the proxy forces. Ukraine and Russia are not. No. So we're proxy forces for Ukraine Again, and Russia's yes. war. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly, that's a perfect way to do it, where yeah. people think it's the other way around. It's not. No. And that's what's unique here. Uh, secessions to Russia? I think the original six-point plan uh, that was a continuation of the... It's a denial, bro! Oh, that my God! Tried ...twice and failed twice. Bro, um, no be... way! No way! M- fucking Marie Williams said even fucking like did this to your face and told you that this was wrong bro like you have no excuse for falling for this butcher denialist talking point oh he has All no right? excuse He's so for everyone problem. who doesn't know you should uh, if you're if you don't know what butcher is mm-hmm. i assume if you're watching us you're already there <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh this is a specific conspiracy pipeline started by one single source coming out of russia now this source points to natali bennett who was prime minister of israel at the time and boris johnson mm-hmm. now there was obviously just like i was just talking about with proxy forces there's always negotiations going on like we just had them in saudi arabia the u.s wasn't even involved and neither was russia so these plans the six point plans that they were talking about these were the nations of the world trying to come together to bring russia to the negotiating table now hassan is going to say that somehow boris johnson came to ukraine and then said it's not going to happen boris johnson went to butcha and saw it with his own eyes and said there is no way to negotiate with this because it's genocide My hands hurt because I clapped so hard when he did the butcher denial. (laughs) Man, we need to make a bingo card for Hassan. We do. We really do. Every time we watch one, we uh we have the bingo cards ready. Preferable situation than like endless bloodshed over you know inches of territory. Where uh, you know people are being fucking slaughtered I don't endlessly. Think the I'm sorry. Whose territory is it? What about Which Armenia? The... Whose territory, Hassan? Literally, this was filmed while Armenia, like, Indians would describe it as inches of territory. Wait, what do you mean? What... Well, you're saying they're fighting over inches of territory. I don't. He's just saying in the context of how stagnated the war Shut has up, become. Man. Like the the back and forth is. I guess a lot. Out. I think Ukrainian people get angry when they hear you talk about it because they. I, like, I that's understandable. I mean, they I get feel it. Like you're, you're. They want full throated the support. Russian, they they want an expect NATO shot. nation. They don't. Here's they don't the like thing. You, you, you know. You know. It, you know. Ethan. You know what it would feel like. If someone was just doing a Holocaust denial to your face, because that's what he's doing. Is especially he mm-hmm. literally just did it. Yeah, that's the equivalent of how could there be that many ovens or whatever they say, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know exactly what they're... It's the it's the, the smokestacks. Yeah, I know it's going. about that. Because like, yeah. they like rebuilt stuff for the museum, you know? Like, mm. uh, like they got rid... Like, Auschwitz was demolished. They brought yeah. it... They rebuilt that shit for the museum. <laughs> Fucking idiots. They should <laughs> secede territory to a fascist invader it's not even secession of territory it's like prior agreements that neither party has held on to the real ukrainian criticism in this situation comes from people who say well hassan how can you say that when russia has not held on to their obligations and that is true russia has not held on to their side of the bargain on the minsk accords but neither has ukraine i knew he was going to bring up fucking minsk fuck off 
Stop talking about Minsk. Let's talk about the Budapest Memorandum, which promised Ukraine sovereignty for giving up nuclear weapons. Giving the nuclear weapons back to Russia for Russia to invade them 20 years later. How about we talk about that? Fuck the Minsk Agreement. That is the one that matters. That's the one that says Ukraine has sovereignty to make a thing. Minsk came after. Huh? Minsk came after. Who cares? More relevant. I actually, I don't actually know the wording of the Minsk agreement, but I know for a fact Russia broke that it. Specific wording said the Donbass Ukraine War already invalidated it. That Ukraine has sovereignty over its own choices, which means that if it wants to join NATO, it is allowed to. Based on that, the U.S. and Russia were both there. It was over Belarus, which also has been breached by that because Belarus is a puppet state of Russia. Ukraine, I think Kazakhstan, and there was another one. Anyway, doesn't matter. The, the, the point is that their invasion in 2014 was a breach, an entire breach. And then 2022 was a full breach of that agreement that said Ukraine had, to, yeah, had but, its right. But NATO made Russia do it. Of course they did. <laughs> moving on to their borders. And my point is, m- ensuring that with an international cooperation... I don't know anything is, about that accord. What is that? The Minsk Accords yeah. were... Um, so... This, again, goes deep into fucking history. And you can't always say, like, oh, I don't know the history, so I don't know. And then repeat, like, mainstream media propaganda, you know? Well, I don't. Okay. I don't know anything about it. It's like not knowing knowing the history, but repeating Russian talking points. It's almost like like you don't need to know about it because it's not relevant. Yeah, you literally don't. It's just a tanky. A country invaded another country, okay? Exactly. Who's, Who's bad? Oh, the invader. Cool. Great. Glad we agree. State has uh, has even predated or some form of this like Ukraine has apologia. predated even the mm-hmm. Russian uh, nation state or the, the Russian mm-hmm. Empire, I guess. Uh, and its nation state development project has always hinged on uh, excising Russian influence. However, under the USSR, Ukraine, uh, which was uh, called the Ukraine originally, which oh, just means off. like the border. Mm-hmm. Okay, was you know what's funny? Seen as the Ukraine's been a country longer than Russia. Well, because I said, I'll say things, <laughs> I started switching it around because normally I'd say the Ukraine and Russia war, right? Mm. And I said that to Kafa and she was like, it's not the Ukraine. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, because it's like, that's what it sounds like. I'm saying like, because mm. you don't need to put the article the even there. No. So I always will say the Russian Ukraine war or the Russian yeah. invasion of Ukraine yeah, or yeah. the war in Ukraine. I just say the Russian invasion. But I keep the not the and in front of Ukraine because it's like <laughs> it's like being careful with pronouns, you know, yeah. except it's like national sovereignty for people. <laughs> no, and that's um, like it's so stupid. People think history started in 1917. Like tankies think the history started in 1917. No, no, no. It started in 1916. 16. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Easter, Easter Rising. What? Hmm. Easter Rising. That's when history started. Sure. <laughs> but like that's and that's that's why these people always say that Ukraine is is uh, a part of Russia is because of the Soviet Union. Who and cares? I bet you this fucking idiot does as well. And I bet you he also doesn't realize that Ukraine has been a country longer than Russia. Uh, I mean, what had plenty of Russian uh, sympath- uh, sympathetic people that lived in the eastern regions. Uh-huh. Um, and that sympathy oh, only grew the further east you went. No, it didn't. It was manufactured by Russian neo-Nazis and Wagner who you were can sent see- in. Literally in our video with Kafa, I put a quote in there from Igor Gherkin, and he says there was no support of Russia in Crimea or the Donbass. I organized it. Putin now says it openly. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was always the fact, and we were saying it from the very beginning, also, pretty much. I, just to be clear, right? Ukraine had all the like machinery and factory of the Soviet Union, right? 
So a lot of when the Soviet Union existed, a lot of people that were in Russia's territory of today would work into what Ukraine's territory was now. Mm. So the only reason why there's actually a cross language isn't actually because these were Russians emigrating into the Ukrainian territory. They still commuted. Right. Yeah. So it was more about the Russian people, the Russian working class coming in and the then people who form a support structure around the economy there you know there wasn't as much settlement even yeah it's like um it's like a chinatown almost in a way where it's like that's where all the commerce is so all the you know yeah but that's actually like you know like they don't go back to china at the end of the day no 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 i know i know but it's it'd be like if you know if china was next door or you know, it'd be like I would say it's like, it's like Mexican laborers. A lot of people yeah, learn Spanish yeah. in the South because a lot of Spanish speaking people, but there is also a lot of immigration as well from there. But mm. specifically the argument that they make is like about these factories and stuff when it's just not the case. You know, when the Soviet Union fell, actually a lot of Russians were like, I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even the ones that were there. So just stupid. The closer you got to current uh, existing Russian territory. Now that is no longer the case. Make no mistake. I'm not saying that at all. It's, and that is no longer the case, almost entirely due to Russia's actions in uh-huh. that area. Like blowing he the shit out of Kharkiv bot. is going to make sure. Sh- hmm? He did a reverse bot. Normally it's like, I think Russia's wrong bot, but he did all yeah. the justification of Russia and then finished with the bot. Yeah. Weird. Tricky. Sure, he's a fastest way to make sure that there is no sympathies for your government whatsoever fucking ever ever again for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. so that's all gone away um but originally the contention was lpr and dpr through russian influence and this is the ukrainian assessment of the situation these two areas uh wanted autonomy and were getting backed by the russian government and western involvement that wanted to keep ukraine in the sphere of the west no. did not want to give the actual protective assurance or uh, assurances sorry to ukraine but wanted to play the the delicate balance of like saying you know what yeah maybe we'll get you in the nato maybe we'll get you in the nato with no real interest in getting them in the okay. NATO. maybe we'll get you in the hang EU. on hmm. Hassan, Hassan, NATO Hassan, expert. if oh. we wanted to even support the defense of the donbass who would we be funding to do that hmm. nazis do you think there was a problem It's it's almost like um, sending neo Nazis in pushed other neo Nazis elsewhere who then fought back. Funny. Well, it's I mean, there are uh, neo Nazis at Euromaidan. Right sector comes out of Euromaidan. Mm. No, I know, I like and I'm relevant. saying that the that it's it it all formed yeah. like the the conflict. But it was only country, Nazis fighting Nazis. We talk about this all the time. Every country has neo Nazis. Yes, but it was Nazis fighting Nazis Nazi Nazi in like 20, 2014 to twenty twenty two. That whole Donbass thing was Nazis fighting Nazis. It was Russian Nazis fighting Ukraine Nazis. It scaled Very back, simple. especially especially when when tank when Trump gave him the tank pushes. <laughs> it started scaling back. Mm. They started arming Azov towards because Israel know, was. Sure. Funnily enough, yeah. But they started funding them later, like post 2016, then yes. 2018, and then 2020. Like there was an upscale in arms packages. Yeah. But still, they didn't really give them shit until like right before the. Uh, Not really. No. So how did With Ukraine no violate into the EU? Agreement? What? How did Ukraine violate their agreement? Um, there was mass shelling on both sides, Told uh, you. like back Are and forth the shelling. War? Uh, oh. No. Maybe Russia shouldn't have fucking sent neo Nazis into the area and tried to start a, a small scale Maybe war. Maybe Igor Gherkin should influence. just have fucked off. Mm. Oh, uh, back and forth shelling that has been happening since uh, 2004. Okay, uh, those that, are non aggressive. 13 agreement? or 14,000 uh, people dying. Okay, so uh, in about totality. That, so that is. So at the time, there was a agreement called the Minsk Agreements. Mm. There were two versions of this, which neither side agreed upon, which meant that uh, LPR and DPR would still remain under Ukraine. <laughs> Hold on. Nobody agreed to it. So who gives a fuck? Bro, 
He said, did you hear him say 2004? Yeah. Where is he that's getting that I, date from? That's why I corrected him to 14. Because oh. <laughs> he was fucking incorrect, because clearly he knows nothing. He's too Iraq war brain. Mm. Ukraine, but would have autonomy, okay? And Ukraine understandably did not want this because that would mean that Russia would have an outsized control on Ukrainian affairs and Ukraine politics, which it already did through Russian loyalist leadership that they had that was, uh, that was obviously existed. squashed because there's always been this back and forth between no, Western no. influence in Ukraine, wanting to move them into the Western sphere no. of influence, and Eastern influence, Russian influence in Ukraine, okay. which wanted to maintain... Okay, what he's talking um, about... In 2004, this is when, uh, you remember when they poisoned the guy with dioxin? Mm -hmm. That's when this happened. So a Ukrainian presidential election was controversial during the election campaign. Opposition candidate Viktor Yukashenko was poisoned with dioxin. The same shit, Agent Orange, literally. Mm. And then the prime minister, Viktor Yanukovych, was declared the winner. That was 2004. Mm-hmm. So this whole thing starts with this election. So there's the Orange Revolution that starts in 2004. So November, Prime Minister, blah, 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 blah. During the two-month period, which became known as the Orange Revolution, large people process successfully challenged the outcome after the Supreme Court of Ukraine annulled the initial result due to widespread electoral fraud. A second round rerun was held, bringing to power Yukashenko as as uh, and pres as president and Yulia Yulia Tom 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 as prime minister, and leaving Yanukovych in opposition. The Orange Revolution is often grouped together with other early 21st century protest movements, particularly within the former USR, known as color revolutions. Russian military officers viewed such color revolutions as attempts by the U.S. and European states to destabilize neighboring countries and undermine Russian national security. Okay? Did you hear anything about shelling in no. there? Okay. Nope. Now, let's see where the, where the next entry picks up. Oh, okay. So the very next entry in Wikipedia, President Vladimir Putin accused organizers of the 2011 and 2013 process of being former advisors to Yukashenko and described the protests as an attempt to transfer the Orange Revolution to Russia. <laughs> Guess what happens next? No, he invades. Funny. He sends Whoa, Nazi you mean there was like a, there was a, a gap bad? until Euromaidan? Crazy. Mm, funny. And nothing happened and there was no shelling, but Hassan is so, so Russia pilled that he's calling back 2004 because that's when the Orange Revolution happened. <laughs> You can't even keep it straight. Uh, Ukraine's status and, and wanted to change Ukrainian affairs. Okay, so they were both attacking each other. And you think the attacks were equally provocative. And again, I don't know anything about I it. Think that, I think that uh, uh, the, the, uh, this was another instance of, of proxy war, 100%. Mm -hmm. okay. Apology. Yeah. Like, there are people who, who uh, well, wanted to be okay. a part of Russia. This is closer to a proxy war because Russia was using a proxy force. Mm, you could yes, say, I will. You could say Wagner. If you're going to talk about the proxy war, we can talk about Wagner, right? They're a proxy yeah. force. Mm -hmm. At the same time, in this role, they're closer to defense contractors. So, sure, it's more of a shadow war. Yeah, than a proxy war. Still, yeah. So, anyway, and, another proxy war um, debunk. No, the. At the end of the day, though, like the reaction from the Ukrainian government to that was uh, understandable. They wanted to protect their own interests. They wanted to protect their own borders. They wanted to protect their hegemo uh, hegemony and, uh, and, and and national security interests. But there's a difference between like what they did in Crimea, for example, and what they did with LPR and DPR. What do they do in Crimea? There, there yeah. was a referendum. People say it was bullshit referendum. It was, it was. under gunpoint, which is understandable to say that because that is what happened in Crimea. But they bust Russians in. We're good. You, we, we have, we've got a whole episode on this that yeah, we just watched. Go watch our episode with Kafa. It's mm -hmm. all about episode Crimea. 35. We're good. I'm done. Russian with territorial this. claims to Crimea. Uh, as we a, don't need to hear Crimea like, shit. Russian yeah. territorial claims to Crimea had more historical prescience. Give me something and, that's going to be funny. I can't. Okay. I don't want this annoying fucker on my screen. Give me something that's going to make me laugh. All right, we're done.